podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Networks on Saturday, July 11th, 2020. Yeah, brand new show. This is episode 1709. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast comes to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure they are by making access and authentication seamless. Whether they're working in the office or remotely, visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This episode of The Tech Guy is brought to you by CashFly. Give your users the seamless online experience they want. Power your site or app with CashFly CDN and be 30% faster than the competition. Learn more at twit.cashfly.com. And by LastPass. Give your IT department a break and supply them with the tools that really protect your business. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to find out how they can help you. And by Simply Safe. Simply Safe believes that simple is safer. And that's exactly why Simply Safe is the home security for right now when feeling safe at home has never been more important. Go to simplysafe.com slash twit and get a free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy, and it is time to talk tech. Computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography. You can talk about smartphones with me, smart watches, uh, anything with a chip in it. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's my phone number, 888-827-5536. That's toll-free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada. Outside that area, you can uh, still reach me, but you'll have to use Skype or something like that. Skype out. There's something that can call a phone number internationally. And uh, if you can do that, well, you're golden. You're good. 8888-ASK-LEO. shouldn't cost you anything. It's, uh, it's toll-free from the U.S. and Canada. Uh, and it's toll free if you Skype out as well. Uh, oh, and the lines are lighting up. I like that. The phones are hot. It's because I wasn't here last week. I hope you had a good fourth. Did you have a good fourth? Good. Good. Missed you. Anything, anything interesting happen? In the world of tech, of course, there's always interesting things happening. Always. We got the uh, beta, uh, public beta, the ones you could install, but I don't recommend you do unless you're very adventurous for the new iOS and iPad OS, the 14. Of course, I'm adventurous, so I install it. I like it. It's, and it seems like it's reliable. I mean, you know, the, the rule is you should never install uh, beta versions of software on, um, on anything that you need, <laughs> that you need to use because you could regret it. But uh, I like, you know, I like the widget uh, thing. So I'm a widget user from Android, and uh, the fact that we can we got widgets now is uh, is really cool. I think. Uh, so there's some nice features. You know, it's going to take a little getting used to. But uh, you know, what's interesting is that the privacy settings on the new version of iOS are a lot stronger, and uh, that's caused some conniptions. <laughs> because among other things, uh, the new iOS will warn you. A little thing will slide down uh, if uh, another program, a program you're not using, is looking, is sniffing your key, your uh, clipboard, <laughs> and uh, programs like TikTok, for instance, were capturing every keystroke through the clipboard, everything that you were typing. What? There. Were <laughs> uh, that doesn't seem like a nice thing to do, even if you're not using TikTok. Understand, right? That's the problem. If you're using TikTok, they have to see what the keyboard's doing. But what if you just have it installed on your phone and it's still doing that? Turns out a lot of app applications did that. Microsoft's LinkedIn application uh, did that. Mm hmm. Now, LinkedIn's response was, that was a bug. Uh, we're fixing that right now. And I believe them because you wouldn't, you know, this is a big company. You're not going to, Microsoft's not going to take a chance that somebody's going <laughs> to... You know that they're they're not going to take a chance to start snipping sniffing on stuff, and uh, and then somebody discovers it and that the damage to reputation alone. I mean, you know that's not they're not going to do that on purpose. So they said it's a bug. 
They said it's a bug. Um, last week, a fellow discovered the LinkedIn app was copying the contents of their clipboard after every keystroke. LinkedIn said it's a bug. They said the company had traced the bug to, quote, a, co a code path. This is going to be an interesting statement because either they're trying to baffle us with, you know, programmer talk, or it really will make sense. A code path that only does an equality check key clipboard contents in the currently typed content in a tech bo text box. Okay, besides the fact that that makes no sense in English, <laughs> in code ease, what he's, I think, saying is it's checking to see if what you typed matches what's on the clipboard. Why would it be doing that? Well, but we don't store or transmit the clipboard contents. We're just checking. Why would you do that? That's a weird thing. <laughs> a thing we would never have known about if iOS 14 hadn't started notifying people. There's something looking at your clipboard there. TikTok uh, says it'll stop doing it. LinkedIn says a bug. We're going to fix it. I, be you know, Honestly, I believe LinkedIn. 56 apps, top apps, big apps, we're reading the contents of a clipboard. My, you know, knowing a little bit about how software works, my guess is there was some, you know, one of the things, one of the dirty little secrets of software development is uh, why write it if you can just uh, steal it? <laughs> if you can borrow it. So what happens a lot in uh, software development, it's kind of an interesting thing is uh, developers say, oh, I need to, you know, write a login page or something. And instead of sitting down and just doing it from scratch, they do a Google search. They often end up on a site called Stack Exchange, but there are a number of other sites like this, where somebody has said, here's how you do it. Oh, that was nice of them. So they copy and paste it. They might look at it and say, yeah, that looks about right. <laughs> So they copy and paste it, and they're done. Look, saved a lot of time. Boss is going to love me for that. I just love that. It's not plagiarism. No, in fact, that's really how development often works. You don't you don't write anything from scratch that you could avoid writing from scratch. You you borrow from yourself. You borrow from others. It's simple stuff. You could have written it. I could have written that. I just didn't. You know, would have taken me an hour. Now I just got copy and pasted from Stack Exchange. Everything's good. And that's my guess that that's what happened, is that because this is code that doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would you check every time somebody types something and see if it's on the keyboard? I mean, the clipboard. I don't know why you would do that. I can't even think. I'm racking my brain. Maybe you can. There's no reason to do that. So it's just probably it was in the bad code. It wasn't good code. The bad code they pasted, these 56 apps pasted. <laughs> and uh whoops i guess we're gonna have to fix that it's embarrassing now linkedin's being sued uh a guy named adam bauer filed a lawsuit in san francisco federal court saying hey here's that's private it's private was on my clipboard Turns out because, and actually it is a bigger problem because the way Apple works, if you copy something to your clipboard on your Mac or your iPad, it's then visible on your iPhone, which means it's then visible to LinkedIn or whatever other applications snooping. Ooh. So it's a class action lawsuit. It's a violation of California's new privacy law. You know, that just went into effect on Jan July 1st. So 10 days, <laughs> it took them 10 days before the first lawsuit. LinkedIn hasn't said anything. They said they did it unintentionally. And I believe that. There's no reason for a big company like LinkedIn to do that. TikTok maybe, you know, who knows what TikTok's up to. TikTok's being banned right and left from a lot of companies because they're worried it's a Chinese company that makes it bite dance, and they're worried that it's just like a little putting a little Chinese spyware on your phone. I would, I'd be more, I'd, exp but it's not just it's it's LinkedIn, it's TikTok, AccuWeather, AliExpress, another Chinese shopping app, very popular. Um, Fifty six apps in all, and the, and these are top apps. I bet you it's millions if you go, you know, through all of the apps. 
but we'll see more and more because now it's a public beta. A lot of people can install iOS 14. I have to say, I haven't yet found it. I installed it a couple of days ago. I haven't yet seen it, uh, ha that behavior on any of the apps I use. There's another good reason. I say this all the time. Only install stuff you really need. And only install stuff from reliable sources. Don't don't be don't be a tourist. Don't be an app tourist. Oh, let's see what this does. Don't be downloading and installing stuff you don't need. There might, chances are good you're gonna run into something you don't want to run into, whether it's intentional or not. And I bet you anything. Time will tell. I don't know. This lawsuit's gonna be thrown out. I would expect, but who knows? You don't know. They'd have to prove intent, I would imagine, that it's, that it's not just, oh, whoops, we copied and pasted something. We didn't really understand what it did. It's going to be more like that, I think. There's no reason why Microsoft or LinkedIn would want to snoop on your clipboard. Again, I don't. Tip -tock, TikTok, maybe. I wouldn't put it past them. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number if you want to talk about this or you know, anything. There's lots to talk about. I wasn't here last week, so we can catch up. Where were we? We're going to catch up with where we, where we were. 888-827-5536. Scott Wilkinson's coming up. We're going to talk home theater in about 15. We've got a great chat room. If you uh, like to chat along while you listen, irc.twit.tv. That's where the Team Tech Guy lives. They're helping me out. So when you ask a question, they can help too. We also have a website where all the answers, all the questions, all the silly stuff goes. It's a free, it's no sign up, techguylabs.com. I recommend it. If you have a question, it's a good search there. You can always find an answer. TechGuyLabs.com. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, look who's here. Relested, <laughs> relaxed. Relested? Relested and relaxed <laughs> after her up words. vacation. Did you do anything fun on the 4th of July? I did. I realized that. Uh, oh, good. What did you do? I my brother has a pontoon boat, so oh, that's we went fun. to Lake Berryessa and spent oh. the day on the lake. And Aren't it was you fancy? Lovely. <laughs> it was very that nice. Sounds wonderful. Yeah. I realized that we have a lot of international listeners. You know why? Because I got a lot of emails saying, "Where are you? Where are you? Yeah. Where are we? Yeah. And, and I, Petaluma, like no, no, no. I mean, like, is... what are you doing on the fort? There's nobody oh. here. I'm listening to the show and I don't hear you. And the reason is because they don't know that, that it's, it's a, a Independence Day in the United States. <laughs> For them, it was just an every every day old weekend. Well, this year it kind of was that way anyway. I mean, well, the, you went to a well, I did go a, to the lake, a I, pontoon I, I went boat, on a boat, pontoon boat. But normally, I would be at the Marin County Fair, and that didn't oh, happen. Oh, what fun! And um, there were a lot of fireworks that night, though. <laughs> not that's legal, right, they're not, but there, yeah, were, yeah. <laughs> there were a lot. I watched... <laughs> what is going on? Whoa. <laughs> I know how... I know. Whoa. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm not drunk, honest. <laughs> exactly. I watched... You're making up words. I, I, I I'm watched sure. uh, TV. I watched TV fireworks on the 4th of July. That is I not as good. I didn't even watch TV fireworks. I didn't see... Like, I heard... Some I watched distance, TV I fireworks, and then like Kenny Loggins playing a song in his garage, and it's <laughs> which just, one? <laughs> it was weird. Well, he played Footloose, but it was just it was it was odd. It was odd. Um, it was. It's, and I thought I I looked odd. at my wife and I said, "Wife, um, <laughs> wife, wife, this we're gonna look back on this and say how weird this was that we were doing this, but it is. But you know what? This is what we gotta do. We gotta do it. We do it." Yeah, I know somebody who just had a baby like two days ago, and I go, this is going to be really weird for you to explain how yeah. you birthed this child. Yeah. <laughs> all alone in a room all With by yourself. With a mask on. <laughs> anyway, enough of that. How are I, you? You're good? I, I think so. I think so. I see the phone. Good. Yeah. For some reason, the phone is all bold and... Well, I'm excited because is this now... New? Something happened, and I can see everybody's name. So it's if magic. you are bad and misbehave, I will know it. So use, <laughs> but we won't use your last name on the air. No. Oh, that's interesting. I probably can't. I think we maybe got a new company or something. Something maybe. happened. Because remember, last time it was not good. Yeah. Who uh, should I start with? Don't say your go, last name. Let's go with. I can't pronounce it. Uh, let's go with Cheryl in Temecula. I, I I really like her story. She's streaming wildlife, <laughs> which seems that's a good thing to do. Which, which seems a very exciting these days. That's a good thing. Thank you, Kim. Oh, you're welcome. Hello, Cheryl Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo. You're streaming wildlife. 
I am. I have a 24-7 live stream on Twitch, so if you're able to pull it up. Oh, now, yes, I can pull it up. What, you know, uh, so it's consistently the top-rated streams are always like kitties or eagle babies yeah. or things. What is what is your stream? This is a barn owl box, and the, it's, so it's twitch.tv slash hoothouse live stream. All one word, hoothouse live stream. Wow, and what are we watching? Well, right now you are looking in a box, and there are four baby barn owls in there. Four of them. They're beautiful. They're little fuzzies. Yeah. They're, They're little fuzzykins. Fuzzy and then there's a little one on the right. Well, there's four in there right now, and then you see the overlay is the outside of the box. Yeah. And does the camera so, move every once in a while, or am I not going to be able to? See? No, it's stationary views, but oh. I can make the outside bigger and put the birds on the overlay. You know, I can switch how, it back and forth. How prescient of it of you was it when you said I should put a camera in that bar, barn box? Well, so we put up this barn owl box. You know, it's just pre-made. Yeah. Put it up on a fourteen foot post on our property in Temecula, and for fun. We thought, let's put a camera in there. So we've always had wise security cameras for the perimeter of our house. You know, those work yeah, great. Because they're cheap. They're cameras. like 20 bucks. They're cheap. So we had an extra one. We put one in the box. Perfect. And so you can see the power cord coming down. It's wireless. And sure enough, within a couple of weeks, a pair of barn owls oh moved goodness. in. And then they started. This was back in December. Now, barn owls... I love owls. I love them. And these are the cutest little fuzzy babies I ever saw. But they make a little bit of a kind of a screechy sound. What is the barn owl sound? Just screeching, like, like you said. It's <laughs> sounds like somebody's dying in your backyard. Times four times whoever, you know, the times the parents. So, um, Oh, this is great. You're, how many people are watching your stream? I mean, do you know? Uh, let's see. Right now I have 50 Oh, well, that'll go up. A lot from your your chat is probably how many people. On. How many uh, people have you had in the past? You, oh, it varies, but I would say fifty is high. So oh, maybe we're going to get more than that. Between oh, good and you know, I've been doing this since December. This is actually the second brood or batch of babies that this pair have had. So these, these ones are about four or five weeks old. Oh, mm -hmm. they're so cute. So we have the wise cam. It's hard to tell, but one of them's mounted on outside of the box with the hole looking in. So that's what we're looking at. We also have the second camera is on a pole facing the owl box. It's about five feet away from the entrance. So, yeah. can, uh, you know, owls land you on it. see him come and go. Yeah. yeah, it's a good shot. It's actually it's amazing how good this right. wise cam looks. It's well, like high it, def. It's good. it's good, but there are glitches because wise isn't made for streaming, even though they do have right. a patch that we downloaded. Yeah, they don't want you to do that. Hey, hang on, because i got to take a break. Mm -hmm. Scott Wilkinson, okay. home theater guru, is coming. I see a lot of little owls floating up <laughs> <laughs> floating up on the screen. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Are they cheap? Are they chirping and cheeping? I mean, what, why? Are they making uh, noise? So the, the motion with the mouth, it looks like they're chirping. It's also, they're just trying to cool themselves. They're actually oh, not making any sound. They're gulping so. air. They, yeah. They're yeah, it's pretty air. hot out there, actually, I bet. I will yeah. put that in the chat on yeah. that thing right now. We have um, this is so commands cool. with owl facts. I have moderators from around the world. Oh, you're smart. You're, so this sounds like something you wanted, you've wanted to, you've really thought about. Oh, no. This is all just fun, and it all kind of evolved. Over, we, I knew nothing, didn't know what I was doing. It evolved over the months, and it's just been super fun. So the, the thing about the cameras is it's wireless. Yeah. Of course, we had the power cord. Our house with the power source is uh, 45 yards away. Yeah, be the careful. Don't, I've cords. mowed over those power cords before. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do not mow oh, them. Yeah, the rodents chew it <laughs> yeah. you know, and all that. Yeah, so. yeah, because they love that plastic, yeah. The camera that we'd like to get, like to get a streaming camera, we will Ethernet it and run the wire, even if it's underground, and put it in the PVC. We'll dig a hole and go, you know, to our router in the house because the wireless one isn't very reliable. We do have a mesh node system, so if you look on the overlay, down on the ground to the right, there's a Tupperware box that has a node in it. Oh, neat. Kind of enhance the But you'd prefer there. to do it wired. And actually, really one advantage of doing it wired is there are cameras that do 
what we call PoE, which is power over Ethernet. So the okay. one wire would both power it and provide Internet. And those wires, seriously, you could hang. You know, you could you could probably run it in the air, which it may be may be a little bit safer. So there are a lot of companies oh. that make PoE cameras with ether that you do the power over the Ethernet. Uh, okay. Look at all the little owl, any... owl icons. Oh yeah, <laughs> so my son's the my son's the one that did all the techie stuff through, you know, the cameras. He knows what he's doing. Lasses. Look at this. This is awesome. So wow. every time somebody follows the channel, you get this 150 emote explosion. Oh, that's cute. That's <laughs> I wish cute. you could see. So the owls are active at night. They they're in they're asleep during the day. Do you have lights out there? Oh no, the Wise has uh, infrared, doesn't it? Yeah. So that's another thing it you'd want. It doesn't bother the owls at all. But as um, soon as the sun goes down, the mom and dad owl who live outside during the day drop off rodents all night. So that's when it's active, Ooh. and that's when it's fun to watch. Uh. Yeah. Mm. Well, well. So, <laughs> you know what would really be fun is to have a uh, PTZ camera yeah. out there, pan, yeah. tilt, zoom, so that you or if your son's really handy, he could actually wire it up so that the Twitch guys could steer it. And you'd want one with a microphone, although there is a microphone on that Wise, but I don't know how uh, much. It is. I'm glad you mentioned that is one of the problems we have is sound. Yeah. Because the Wise does not. They don't support what you're doing. Well yeah. Oh, there's Eric. Hey, Eric. So um, I'm looking at, I mean, a little more expensive than the Wise, obviously. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm looking at, uh, for instance, a camera. I'm actually over at CCTV Camera World where they have a lot okay. of them. And if you search for POE cameras, you'll see a number of them with night vision, pan, tilt, zoom, power over Ethernet. Uh, I just don't know of a brand particularly that I would recommend. I don't have any. I only have experience with the consumer stuff like Wise and Nest and stuff like that. One so. other problem we have, and I don't know if this is going to be with the streaming camera too. If there's a lot of activity up close to this Wise cam, it glitches and sometimes freezes. Yeah, and that that and has they to do, do move fast. Right yeah, the camera. they can't. It can't. Um, yeah, that's a that's that's normal because it's highly compressing oh, the data. Okay. Ethernet will save that a little bit, but remember, it might. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't. You know, maybe somebody listening will have some recommendations. I don't off the top of my head, uh, but that's what I would look for: is is a PoE okay. power over Ethernet and PTZ. And there are quite a few of them that'll do this. I have to run, but I'm so glad you shared this with us. It's so cute. Oh, good. So okay, cute. We'll come back at night when it's I will. When the action really starts. <laughs> okay. Twitch.tv right, slash Hoot House live stream. That's awesome. What is hip? That's what everybody wants to know. Well, I don't know what's hip, but having a nice TV helps. <laughs> Scott Wilkinson. <laughs> you know, it's funny because we have two contributors to the show on uh, Saturdays, one of whom is in a boom period right now. That's you, home theater, right? Yep. Everybody's, yep. Everybody's doing it. One of whom is suffering mightily. That's Johnny Jett, the travel guy. <laughs> it yeah, just really, shows you, you know, yeah, just that's just what happens. Uh, there's some winners and some losers in quarantine. How are you? Hey, doing good. Happy 4th uh, uh, of July, belated. Happy 4th of July for you, too. One thing I would encourage everybody to go check out while they're at home is a new music video put up on YouTube by my wife. Oh, I will check it out. Yeah, go to YouTube.com and uh, look for Joanna Kasdan, J-O-A-N-N-A-C-A-Z-D-E-N. -N -N. The name of the tune is Hard Times Come Again No More. Oh, I like it. Which is an old tune. It was written by Stephen Foster in the 1850s. Oh, co no kidding. Stephen but Foster. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she wrote new lyrics regarding the COVID-19 oh, pandemic. It. It's great. We'll play, it's really we'll good. play it a little bit. That's good. Even, even better, I'm on the video playing bass recorder. Nice. <laughs> hey, I wanted to thank you because you recommended some uh, Bluetooth headphones that I really like. Oh, which ones? The one, what do they call? One more? One... 
Yeah, one more. One more. Uh, the ones the that go around your neck. The ones that go around your neck. Yeah. Yeah. The dual driver ANC Pro, they're called. Yeah. I really thought those sounded good. The bass is excellent. You mentioned yep. that the microphone is very good because it's sitting on your collarbone. Right. Um, not in your ear. Not in your ear. And I found it, yeah, it's the best microphone uh, of any Bluetooth I've tried. So, yep. yeah, I wanted, they're not cheap. They're 120 bucks, something like that. But 150 list. Oh, 150. Might, okay. Yeah, so they aren't, they aren't cheap. I agree, but uh, Joanna, in fact, my wife, <laughs> commandeered my pair. She said, "Oh, I really like these. Can I use them for my?" You know, she does a lot of online zooming. Yeah, they're perfect and stuff. for zooming. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so thank you I'm for have that to get recommendation. Me another pair. Sure. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I, you know. <sighs> but hey, uh, I'm glad. Uh, I'm yeah. glad. I'm glad you like them. Uh, they are. They're the best phone headset of the Bluetooth mics are the Bluetooth headphones that I've found. Nice response to, you know, it's interesting. I think there's a huge amount of profit built into most headphones, you know, mm. cause some of the, these hundreds and hundreds of dollars, I don't uh, know, or you, thousands, or thousands, <laughs> I guess, you know, you spend a thousand, those do set the, the planar magnetic using exotic yeah. materials and yeah, technologies. Exactly. exactly. Those sound pretty good. But I think a lot of the headphones in the 150 to $300 range could really, sell for 30 or 40 dollars <laughs> <laughs> well I, I honestly don't know what the margins are there i think they're pretty good i mean there's some pretty good technology goes into a lot of these these days yeah. you know the dual drivers for example the ones you're we're talking about you know have two drivers they have a a base driver a dynamic driver and then what's called a balanced armature for the highs for the they might be called a tweeter you know uh, and they go, uh, one more makes them up to four drivers in each little tiny earpiece. Wow. Uh, how the heck do they do that? I have uh, uh, in-ear monitors that I got from uh, Jerry Harvey, J.H. Mm -hmm. Audio. You know, he makes them for Bono and all the rock stars. He, he was oh, the yeah. founder of Ultimate Ear and then went out and oh, started his yeah, own those, thing. Yeah, those yeah. were really expensive. They have 12 drivers. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't notice that they're 12 times better. They are 12 times more expensive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll tell you this. I did a I did a comparative review of the one more dual driver, triple driver, and quad driver. Yeah. Uh, in ears, wired in ears, not Bluetooth. And I thought the triple driver sounded the best, actually. Yeah. So you maybe because this was always the case with stereos too. Crossover is important, and you can have correct. You can have too many speakers. Cur drivers. Drivers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, within a speaker. If you have a bunch of drivers and you've got a bunch of crossovers, you have to design that very carefully. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, most speakers for most people are, are two-way, what we call two-way, which is it has a woofer, a bigger one, and a tweeter, a smaller That's one. That's all you need? That's in really life, all you need. All you need in life <laughs> is a dog There's and a bird, woofer. a woofer and a tweeter. That's all you yeah, need. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, sometimes, okay, you get a three-way speaker with a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. And then yeah. you need two crossovers. And the way that the crossover shunts the frequencies from the lower frequencies to the woofer and then slowly to the tweeter or to the mid-range and then to the tweeter, that's an art and a science all unto itself. That's why, and you talk sometimes about these like great uh, speaker designers like Andrew Jones. and Andrew Jones. There's, and um, it's, yeah. as, it's as much... Paul Barton. It's like science, but it's also a little art, I get the sense. There is actually art involved. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah. No question about it. And so experience counts because you try something. There's some. There, I'm sure there's quite a bit of trial and error going on there. And you try something and you go, oh, well, on paper, that looks like it should work really, really well. But then you put it in a speaker and you put it in a room. It may even measure really well. This is the weirdest part. Let me tell you something. You put it in an anechoic chamber. That is a room that has no echoes in it whatsoever. And they're really weird rooms. Have you ever been in one? Yeah, they sound weird because... They sound weird because yeah. there's nothing. You're there's used to nothing. echo in a room. You don't know it, exactly. but you're used to some response Exactly. From so the when room. you go into a room where there's nothing, yeah. it's creepy and weird. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Anyway, it might even... But that's where you measure speakers. Right. Right, you put them on a on a pedestal in the middle of this anechoic chamber, and you put a microphone in there, and you measure them, and they might measure really well. You might go, "Wow, that is so flat," and then you you put it in a regular room, and you listen to it, and you go, "Ugh, that sounds horrible." <laughs> <laughs> so, well, I, that kind of makes sense that 
and actually it's kind of almost reassuring that the numbers aren't the be all and end all. And we see this Correct. all the time. Numbers are easy to grok. You can look at numbers on a page and say, yep. I want yep. the one with the highest number. But it's not yep. just speakers or headphones. People do that with or power, technology of all kinds, even computers. Yeah. They go, yeah. well, that's 3.6 gigahertz. That must be better than 3.4 gigahertz. And it's, more, <laughs> it's often more complicated than that when you get in a yeah. real world situation. Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, the contrast numbers on TVs. Right. You know they'll they'll make contra they'll make contrast measurements out of the most absurd conditions and go oh look we have a million to one contrast ratio, well in the real world situation watching real world content it's nowhere near that and it doesn't need to be because our eyes don't have a million to one <laughs> contrast ratio nowhere near yeah. it at least I, not all at once I think so, we want, we we like the idea as consumers of a of an objective measure that we could just look yes. at. Yes. And say, yeah. okay. And the problem That's with better. subjective is it, you know, it varies from person to person. And so it's. Very... And the environment. Yeah. You know, because uh, here's the problem with speaker reviews is a, a reviewer will have a set of speakers in his room, his or her room. And that that room may very well be very different from your room. Well, and one so they hopes go, the reviewer that you follow. Yeah. Is smart enough to take that into account. Yes, and the good ones are. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. right. So as with anything Absolutely. else, you know, when, you, when you're looking for movie reviews, you find somebody whose taste kind of matches yours. Exactly right. And, exactly uh, right. I guess you have to do the same thing when it comes to uh, audio. Audio and video. And video, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, such a yeah. it's really such a subjective thing. It can't be. There is. There's an objective part to it, but you yeah. can't exclude the subjective part. Yeah. Well, thank goodness we have a home theater geek on our team. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted oh, to thank you. To so once again, uh, Joanna's recording. It's on YouTube. You're yep. on it, too, playing I'm the sack butt. Uh, whatever. The bass recorder. It's close enough. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Hard uh, times come again no more. Check it out. Her lyrics are, are wonderful. I I, I'm I so proud wait. of her. She's a beautiful that, yeah. singer. And we will yeah. put a link to it on our show notes at Tech. Oh, and don't forget on her channel also Beyond Antares from the Twit New Year's show. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was beautiful too. Thank you, Mr. Scott Wilkinson, Leo Laporte, the Tech Guy. More calls right after this. I'm going to play it right now. Cool. Yeah. As soon as I can find it. <laughs> the chat room has linked to it, of course. Thank yeah, you. I, I put a link in the chat room. Oh, you did too. Good. Thank you. Oh, because it's slow to start. <laughs> well, it's got the opening credit. Yeah. Well, it started far Here's, away. Here, do you want to see them? They're so cute. Surprise. They're so cute. This sickness That's good sound. Thank you. I worked hard on that sound. It's beautiful. But it cruised across the ocean. It's hard to do. It flew here in the skies. Oh, hard times come again.
Hey, Laura, why don't you come in with this? Do we turn on each other or be grateful for our lives? Leave it playing. Singing hard times come again. That nice. That's Joanna Kasdan, Scott Wilkinson uh, on the bass recorder uh, video that they made. Beautiful. I love folk music. Nice job, Scott. That's beautiful. And and that bass recorder. That is a uh, that is a pretty little instrument, I must say. Um, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's nice when we can have our contributors show their additional skills. Scott says he can play anything with wind. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> 8888 Ask Leo, the phone number. Back to the phones we go. And Sal's on the a line from Yorkville, Illinois. Hello, Sal. Hi, Leo. How are you? I'm great. How are you? Good. Long time, first time. Wonderful. Like Welcome. Days. Yeah. Uh, I, I was just calling to, uh, I seen the, the lady that called about the owls. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know if you were aware, but they have just released, Wise, an outdoor cam, which is completely wireless. <gasps> Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, it's supposed to be out. Um, I pre-ordered it. It should be out in a couple of weeks. And um, it's supposed to come in a couple of weeks. And I didn't know if you had known that or yet or if you wanted to get it or pass it along to her. That might help out. Then she won't have to worry about having the power cord to the owl box. Yeah, you're right. Uh, W-Y-Z-E dot, com, dot uh, com. And if you have a Wise Cam, it looks very similar uh, to the Wise Cam. I would guess that it's the Wise Cam, but they've uh, they've sealed it up and then they've made it wire free. That means it's battery powered. And so... That is going to be a little bit of a limitation because generally the way these uh, battery-powered cameras work is they're only on when there's movement uh, to save battery life. And when that happens, it's probably not ideal for a streaming camera. In fact, she had to yeah, modify the existing wise. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that's a great thing, having an outdoor camera. Uh, and the, one of the reasons people love wise, besides the fact that they're inexpensive... I don't know what they're going to charge for the outdoor, but uh, the base model is $20. The pan and tilt is $30, so I imagine it'll be in there somewhere. Um, one of the nice things... $45. 40? Okay, because yeah, they have to put a bigger, a big battery in it. They say it says it has two 2,600 milliamp hour rechargeables, uh, and with yeah. normal usage, three to six months, but understand normal usage is 10 to 20 video events a day. So... Since those birds are always moving, um, <laughs> a couple of days you can be you can be recharging the thing. But I think for a lot of other uses, a really great idea. And the reason people like these wise cameras, I'm sure the reason you like them is, you don't pay a monthly subscription fee. Oh, I love it because I put the SD cards in there, and even there's a couple cameras that I have by Wise where I pay, and it's only a couple dollars a month per camera. And a lot a less expensive deal. than Nest or any of the other you know big camera. Services. Yeah, Nest just started their new uh, Nest Aware subscriptions, though. Yeah. And they're, yeah, they're actually a little bit cheaper. They've, they've, if you've got a lot of Nest cameras, they want to incent you to have a lot of Nest cameras. And I do. I have one, two, three, four now with my doorbell. So, yeah, I took advantage of that right away. That's a lot better deal. Uh, yeah. I have a lot of Ys, Ye, and Nest all because of you. So The Yees are good, too, aren't they? Those are. That's a Xiaomi's uh, camera arm, and I think they do some very nice action cams and some other things. Yeah, they just came out with an outdoor one, too, that I've had for about a month, and it's a beautiful picture. Real nice. Well, the thing, uh, the thing, you know, I was, the point I was making with Scott earlier about headphones actually applies to these as well. I mean, we're in a situation now where uh, these mass-produced technologies, and a lot of it started with the iPhone back in 2007, They've got it down now where they can make them very, very cheaply. And we can, camera quality has gone through the roof for pennies, you know, pennies. So there's no reason, you know, these other camera companies still charge $150, $200, $300 for their camera. Wise has really shown them, look, these cameras cost us five bucks, dude. We make plenty of money selling them for 20 
<laughs> you, oh, they're beautiful. You, you don't need to te- take people for a ride. And that, in fact, I think that was the plan. They're a s- small company out of Seattle. And of course, they make, like everybody else, they make their China, cameras in China. But you, you, nowadays, you really could take advantage of these uh, the incredible manufacturing skills. So thank you for that uh, tip. Yeah, I don't know if it would work for her, but uh, I ended up recommending when we were talking off the air. Uh, she wants to put Ethernet out there for better quality. And uh, I said, well, oh. get what you need then is a yeah. camera that will support power over Ethernet. So one cable gives you data and power. You plug that in. And uh, and there are lots of, and I suggested she get one that's got pan, tilt, zoom, so that either she or the people on uh, Twitch could aim the camera as the birds move around and things like that. Oh, yeah, I've yet to find an outdoor camera that's wireless, that, or any outdoor camera that's pan cam no it uses too much power you're gonna have to plug those in yeah that's the real problem and that's a thing to remember wireless truly wireless like no plugs no nothing that's always going to be battery obviously and that's going to mean they're going to change how that camera works it's not going to stream but that's how wise works anyway right they they wake up when there's motion you can you watch i guess you can she's doing it yeah you can watch i I have you could you could pick how to set it Right. And, um, right. That and obviously, sense. if you paid a couple of dollars, you could even check while the camera's offline. But I always do continuous streaming. Right. The thing I found with the Nest, Nest is a lot more money, but I have yet to find a camera that scrubs as great as Nest does. I'm very happy with the Nest. Uh, I have to say, we uh, we were on vacation and somebody drove over our mailbox. We have a rural route style mailbox on the street and it just got mm-hmm. flattened. And thanks to the Nest Cam, we're able to scrub back in time and find the moment. It really is great, I have to say. Well, I'm, yeah. it's a pleasure talking to you after all these years. Yes, you too, Leo. Thank you very much, and thank you for what you do, and I appreciate it, and have a great weekend. My great pleasure. Thank you for listening. You too. Folks, the Tech Guy podcast is brought to you quite literally each and every week by Cashfly. That's our content delivery network. When you download a podcast uh, from um, iTunes or your podcatcher or from our website, anywhere you're getting it, you're getting it through Cashfly. We use Cashfly because it gets you the content faster and easier. You're always downloading from a server near you, saves a lot of time, saves us a lot of money. And it's really an amazing solution. We've been a Cashfly uh, users for more than 10 years. I wouldn't consider anything else. It's literally the best CDN I've ever used. 30% faster than the competition and a heck of a lot faster. I mean, a heck of a lot faster than just plain uh, HTTP downloads. Now, Cashfly has done even more to help save money with their 100% cash shield. This is a new feature. You'll benefit from a drastic reduction in data transfer fees from or cloud storage origins like Amazon's uh, S3 because your cash hit ratio suddenly goes to 100%. That means instead of saying, oh, you know, uh, the cash is out to date, we gotta get a new copy of the file from the origin, costing you money, slowing it down, costing your consumer, your customer time, you've always got it on Cashfly's network. Consumers expect 4K content instantly delivered no matter where they are anywhere in the world, it's time to step up, whether it's a faster web page loading or no more video buffering, getting those games in, or getting your podcast to your listeners faster. That's that's what they want. And you can't do that if your cached items are being evicted for large one-off requests, costing you a fortune in data transfer out fees. With 100% cash shield and cash flies guaranteed availability, there's a simple way to avoid this. Basically... Uh, you've got a dedicated storage space on Cashfly just for you. You're keeping your data and content closer to your customers, and you're eliminating the traffic of unreliable, unknown, expensive traffic from other companies. And you purchase as much space as you want. Your data will always be fetched from 100% cash shield rather than your origin. That means you're reducing your origin spend often by thousands a month, plus you're guaranteeing no more cash misses. That's going to really make a difference in your download speeds. Eliminate buffering, guaranteed availability, highest quality of service. It's, I mean, if you're video streaming, you can easily scale to global sizes, global audiences of any size. Uh, You're going to get hyper fast download speeds, low latency, great solution for gaming. And for us, 
as a podcaster, whew, it's amazing. The other thing I love about Cashfly is they work with you to smooth out the spikes. My content, probably yours too, is very spiky. You know, this show finishes two hours later when it's available. Boom, there's a big hit of downloads. And then over the week, it slows down. Boom next week and it slows down those peaks can cost you with other cdns not with cashfly they work with you they look at your usage trends and they smooth it out for an even 12 months of payments that means i never have to worry about exceeding my limits and i don't ever have to worry about getting an outsized bill at the end of the month and, and cashfly's global throughput dominance assures that any cash misses because of their cash shield delivered five times faster than from your origin. They just make it right all the way around. You got to try it. Cashfly right now, if you want to find out if they can save you, uh, especially with this cash shield, if they can speed your downloads up, they're offering a complimentary detailed analysis of your current CDN bill and your usage trends. Send them those spikes. They'll shave off the tops for you. See if you're overpaying as much as 20% or more for your CDN twit.cashfly.com no pressure no sales tactics they just want to show you the difference and it can be huge twit.cashfly.com thank you cashfly so much for making the podcast possible now back to the show mike pittsburgh pa hi mike leo laporte the tech guy hello leo thanks so much for taking my call thanks for calling long long time follower second time caller thank you so I have a Pixel 3a. I love it, but I'm running out of storage on it, and most of the space is taken up by photos and videos. Right. So I back them up to the cloud. I use Google Photos. Perfect. And I want to remove them from the phone, but I also obviously want a second backup because I just don't want one set of photos. So smart. For instance, it's unlikely, but what if Google, for some reason, and this has happened, says, and yeah, we don't like you. We're going to delete your account. Oh no, that's all my pictures. <laughs> exactly. So you're exactly right. I'm thinking of I'm thinking of biting the bolt and getting Amazon Prime. If you oh, then you then they they have unlimited uh, upload for Amazon Prime just like Google does. Except the difference exactly. is uh, they give you uh high quality video uh and photos. Right, right. Yeah. So but how do I move them up to Amazon Photos and is there a way to automate it so that new photos I take automatically You bet. Go up it's just like the Google account. Photos. So you get the Amazon Prime Photo app. Okay. They have a photo app. You turn on that automatic uploader. Boom. Now, okay. once you once you get them uploaded to both Google and Amazon, then you can go into Google. You know, as you probably already know, there's a setting in Google that says, hey, delete everything that's already been right. uploaded. I don't need it. Right, right, right. And you really have it still because you could either open the Amazon app or the Google app, and there's all your photos. And if you wanted a full quality version, you could, you know, download it. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah, Amazon, if you have Prime, gives you unlimited full resolution, unlike Google, full resolution photo storage. They do limit it to 10 gigabytes of video. Okay. So that's something to be aware of. You can buy more. 20 bucks a year gives you 100 gigabytes. So. Right. So if I, if I start that Amazon Prime account and, and connect, I guess, connect my Google photo account to it, It'll automatically take what I no. currently have? Or so, have no, no. So it'll only take what's on your phone. If okay. you have stuff that's no longer on your phone but it's only in Google Photos, you'll need to download it and then upload it to Amazon. No, I got everything on my phone. Oh, yeah. Then it'll just take everything. It just looks in your photo gallery. Not the Google oh, Photos. Okay. It just looks in your regular gallery and says, oh, good, I'll take all that. Actually, on an Android phone, that is Google Photos. Uh, so, yeah, it'll just take it all. Yeah. All right, perfect. Hey, all have right, fun. Thank you. It's, it's a really good idea. You're very smart. Never have just one copy of anything. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Yeah, they stopped, uh, Scooter, they stopped doing that with the Pixel 4. Now it's time for the Scott Wilkinson Show. Love that. That was so beautiful. Oh, thank my gosh. You. Yeah. Thank you. Really nice. We, uh, we, we did all the audio mixing here at home using a DAW, Digital Audio Workstation, mm -hmm. called uh, Studio One from yeah. a company called PreSonus. Very good. That's a very good one, yeah. It is a it is a good one. And yeah. uh, I use their uh, audio interface as well. It has four really good mic preamps in it, so we, we can get up to four signals in at once. Nice. And, and then uh, a um, one of the chat room denizens uh, who goes by Mike Mann – 
uh, here in the chat room. He's not here today, but uh, he he lives nearby and he did the camera. He's a professional video editor and producer, Emmy award winning, actually. He did the uh, camera placement and he did the video editing and I'm, I'm real pleased with it. So you had, it looked like at least two cameras, maybe three. Four. Actually, three, four, wow. Four cameras, wow. yeah. Wow. We kind of went a little overboard, but... No, you know. no, that's fine. And then uh, what, were, what were the cameras? Uh, let's see. We had two Canon 1080p um, uh, uh, camcorders mm -hmm. that were, that were sh shooting upwards. So those were the close-ups on the, uh -huh. uh, the, the fingers and the close-ups on my recorder. And then uh, we had a GoPro Hero 7 as the main two-shot. Which was kind of wide angle, and he, he used Resolve to oh, actually to fix it. Nice to fix the wide angle. Yeah. so that was kind of nice. And then I used my Sony um, RX10 Mark II, uh, which is 4K. The, the GoPro is 4K as well. Uh, to to have the one shot on her. Nice. And uh, so then he he put that all together. She she wrote she took the photograph that that is at the beginning mm -hmm. uh, of the of the, her guitar with a face mask dangling off of it. Very nice. Uh, so that was that was her, and and she designed the the everything there too. So so yeah, we're we're real real happy with it. It took a while, <laughs> you know. Even one song takes a while to do. Yeah. But. Yeah. But uh, we're real happy with it. She's she's actually now working on a completely new original song um, about all the unrest in the world. Oh, good. You know, the political unrest. So yeah, we'll be putting that up uh, in a few weeks, I'm sure. Very nice. So, yeah, we, we sure do enjoy playing and playing music together. We've been doing that ever since we first met. Our first gig was, after, I think we met two weeks before that. <laughs> and somebody came up to us and said, uh, how many years have you guys been playing? Oh, that's <laughs> cute. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> that's beautiful. So Yeah, I like that bass recorder. That sounds so nice. Yeah. Thank you. Isn't that a nice sound? It, it is. It goes so well with her voice, too. And I liked how you mic'd it because you mic it... Uh, not where you would think at the end. <laughs> no, no. You actually you, you mic it up near where the um, it's it's an odd sounding structure, but it's called the thipple. Oh, the thipple. F you mic the F thipple. F, F as F as in Frank. Thipple. F i p p l e. Huh. It's the it's the part the the where the edge is up near the mouthpiece of any recorder. All recorders have it, and so you put the mic near there, and you. You get a really nice sound as long as you don't get the the wind sound coming out of it. So you have to be a little careful with the mic placement there. Hey, Mike Mann's in the chat room now. Hey, Mike. Sorry you weren't here. We played uh, Hard Times, and uh, people seem to like it. And uh, you did a, such a great job on the video editing and everything. So thank you so much for that. <clears throat> Phoenix Warp One. Nothing beats political social protest songs. <laughs> yeah, Joanna's actually an expert in the field of protest songs. She's she knows that field very well. Hey, Airshow's got the PreSonus Studio Live Series Three. That's that's good gear, no doubt about it. PreSonus does a great job. Uh, I've I've got the Studio Sixty Eight, which is I think a newer uh, a USB audio interface, but. The uh, the mic pre's in that thing are just awesome, super quiet. The one the one problem I have had with it was the level controls on the preamp. You have level control for each mic pre, which is great, um, but they're so sensitive. You just you just tweak them by the tiniest amount, and they make a big difference in the level. So uh, I wish uh, there. Th which is a good thing in that they have a lot of range. They have a wide range of amplification. So that's good. And it's super quiet, really good amplification. But to set them correctly is pretty tricky. Um, so, uh, ooh, Jazz Trombone has, has joined the, the chat room. Jazz Trombone, great screen name. One of my favorite things to do is to play jazz trombone. Uh, in fact, <laughs> when Joanna and I first uh, got together and we've played many, many concerts and I often play trombone, um, 
you know, we, we are the only folk music uh, guitar trombone duo, I think, in existence. <laughs> and one of those songs is on her YouTube channel. So uh, I encourage you to go to the, her YouTube channel, Joanna Kasdan, on YouTube. And one of the songs is called... Um, Oh, which is what's the one that I did with her on uh, with trombone? It was, um, uh, now I have to go look it up. Uh, while I'm looking that up, don't forget also that uh, the, the we did at the Twit New Year's party a couple, few years ago. Uh, we did a duet uh, of three three tunes, and one of them was. The, from Star Trek called Beyond Antares, and I was I was playing a, a synthesized wind instrument, and um, so uh, that that one should be very interesting as as well. Uh, oh, whale song is very good on on her YouTube channel. Uh, Trouble in Mind, that's the one where I'm playing trombone. I actually get to play a trombone solo. On a folk album, <laughs> so she's got a number of a number of tunes up there. I encourage you to check them out. I I, I bet you you'll like them. I I'm very proud of her. Very very proud of her. So uh, faux pas asks how many instruments do I know how to play? Uh, depending on how you count them, I would say dozens. Uh, I play many different kinds of flutes. I play. Many different kinds of brass instruments. I just did a recording session last week uh, for a video game, the latest version of uh, Call of Duty Black Ops. And I played Temple Horn, that big Tibetan temple horn. You know, if you've seen a National Geographic show about Tibet and the, the Buddhist monks there, they have these really long brass oh, horns. Oh, That's the one. I yep, have to I, tell uh, Paul Theron about that because he's a massive Call of Duty fan. That's his oh well, the the latest one coming up will have me on that on horn Temple and, Horn, <laughs> on Temple Horn and seashell trumpets. <laughs> what do those sound you know like? What? Well, they they're they're quite astonishing, actually. You know, like the Fiji Islanders. You know, yeah. you see them, yeah, blowing like a conch, their horn. like a conch. Exactly. I have many different ones of many different sizes, which play different pitches. And wow. So we layered a bunch of them. Wow. They're, they're, those That sound is a very deep sound. It gets deep into your soul. And you don't know Amazing. where in the game it'll show up, probably. I don't. Yeah. I don't. Yeah, they just give you a score. It's in the score, yeah. How fun. Yeah. Where did you Where did you do that? Oh, just a studio a, few, a couple blocks away from where oh. I live. Thank you, Scott. Have a great week. My pleasure. Thanks, you Joanna, too. for us. We'll talk to you next week. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital photography, photography, smartphones, smartwatches, all that jazz. 8888-ASK-LEO is the phone number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. or Canada if you have a question, a comment, a suggestion. Always welcome all of the above. 8888 Ask Leo. Line two, Sam, San Diego. Hi, Sam. How we doing, there, Leo? It's been a long time talking to you. Well, it's great to hear from you. How are things in San Diego? Hey, look, I had, I actually had two questions for you. One was going to go with uh, the, the TV wizard, but uh, my main question is, I've been getting this internet pop up all the time called AW Snap. With a sick looking computer. <laughs> it's, 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 you never, that's what the kids say when uh, something uh, is uh, shocking or didn't work. They go, oh, snap. And that's what you're seeing. And that's from Google. <laughs> okay. Oh, snap. It's from the browser. So you're using Chrome, I take it. Yes, I am. Yeah. Exactly. So that's, that's Google's, true. that's Google's error message. And what it, it can mean a variety of things. In fact, that's what the, text on that page says something went wrong it could be it's not exactly a 404 which is i can't find it it's more like a tab crashed or okay. you know something something went wrong with the browser uh if you over and over again you're seeing it all the time is it on the same I went to another computer i don't get nothing yeah so you go to the same page on another computer it's fine so it's something going on with that computer 
and that ver and that Chrome, maybe a Chrome extension that you have turned on, or maybe something unusual installed on that computer. It's a Windows machine. Yes. Okay. So there's a couple of ways you can you can go about kind of. You did a great actually. You did a really good thing, which is to said, well, let's go see that web page on another version, another computer Correct. on Chrome. And um, and it said it's fine. So that's a really good diagnosis. So what you found is it's not the page. It's that computer specifically, that's and it's that Chrome on that computer. So there's right. a couple of things you can do. One thing it's probably not a bad idea is go into uh, the settings. So there's those okay. three lines on the right. And you click those, and it's, you click tools. It's actually under more tools, extensions. Right. And you can get a list of the extensions that are installed. Make sure that everything installed is something you want. Okay. You can disable okay. them or you can remove them. Removing them is not a bad idea. Uh, okay. if, you don't, if you don't know you want it, Removing it is a is a probably a good idea, but you can disable them if you want to just see if that causes. If you can consistently, right. by the way, this is really the most useful thing to know about bugs. That's a bug, by the way. You're getting is if yes. you can make it happen consistently every time. It's a lot more easy, easier to figure out what's going on than if it sometimes happens and sometimes doesn't. But right. is there like a page you can go to every single time that gives you an off snap? Yes. Okay. So, Almost always constantly. Up okay. The other computers. This one here I have now nothing. Zip. So, so there's several possibilities. It's loading an extension that is crashing. There's something that's normal on that page that works on your other computer, but for some yeah. reason, JavaScript or Flash or something is causing Chrome to go, oh, All right. I can't, I don't know what to do. So I would try looking at all your extensions and disabling any that you're not sure you know you want. In fact, the one way to do that is to cross-reference what's the extensions on that Chrome versus the ones on the one that works. And then, do. and then if it's not that, 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 you can maybe uninstall Chrome and reinstall it. Hey, look, really quick before I let you go. Just, yes. You know, you can do it offline. I'm thinking about getting the Samsung 32-inch QLED 50R. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Is it great? Yeah. So now here's a couple of things I would say. <laughs> uh, you and I come from a generation where a 32-inch TV was massive. Bingo, yes. It ain't massive anymore. <laughs> In fact, it's it's smallish. <laughs> okay. So it is. there's nothing wrong with those Samsung QLEDs. If, okay. if you can afford to get a bigger one, I would. Or you have space for the bigger one. I know a lot of times people say, oh, I don't have room for anything bigger. Then the 32 yeah. is fine. Those QLEDs are, are very nice, and they're inexpensive. They're bright. They're good for rooms where you can't make them dark. And I know I know Scott yeah, likes I them. Need. Yeah. Well, look, you know, you're always a good guy to talk to, man. Thanks for being there for us. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for calling. And I, and I love listening to you, man. You're, you're, <laughs> you're teaching me a lot from the old school. I Sam, you. you're great. Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, snap! I gotta remember that when I uh, when something when I when I fritz. Ah, oh, snap! <laughs> uh, yeah, in the old days, remember that when you were this goes back to because we had tubes, right? The CRT tube TVs. The the they measure the size diagonally. So thir a thirty two inch tube TV was huge, but it really it was huge not because of the size of the front, the diagonal screen size. But because it was a tube, the larger the front is, the longer, the bigger the tube is, and the heavier it is. So I don't know if you remember, but those 32-inch TVs, they, they were huge going backwards. They were long, big boxes, and they were very heavy. And that was the limiting factor. You don't want a TV that's three feet off the wall. And at, at that point, you start to get pretty big. So I don't remember anything bigger than 32. I think that was back in the CRT days, that was about the size. Now that with their flat panel, you know, they're six inches off the wall, no matter how big the TV is. You don't have to worry about that anymore. And so, of course, they've gotten bigger and bigger. And it is partly expectation. I mean, if you're used to a 32-inch TV, we would sit across the living room watching our giant 32-inch tube TV. Wow, that's big. So it has somewhat to do with expectations. But really, uh, when you're 10 feet away from a 32-inch TV, it's actually smaller than your phone screen, really. It's really small. It's just that's what we're used to. Nowadays, we want more of a theater, a theatrical experience. We want the screen to more fill our field of view. 
doesn't have to go so that you need your peripheral vision to see the edges. It doesn't have to be that big, although that would be nice. You don't want to be like you're sitting in the front row of a movie theater. But you kind of want it to be, you know, bigger than your... I guess maybe one of the ways to do it is to take your smartphone and, and you know, get it, get it close so that you, when you're watching a movie, it, if you watch your smartphone five or six inches away, that movie looks like you're in a theater. <laughs> so uh, you can do them. If you want to do the math, you can do the math. There are a number of websites that will tell you um, how big your screen should be depending on how far away you're sitting. Um, there's, if you go, there's a viewing distance calculator on a Homestead, my home theater at homestead.com. That's a pretty old page, but it'll give you some idea. Um, if you Google it, you'll find there's others as well. It's something, something uh, a lot of people have done. Op, there's a Wikipedia page on optimum viewing distance. And it turns out if you're going to have a 32 inch TV, you're going to want to be sitting pretty, pretty, pretty close to it to get optimal. What you what you'd kind of like is I don't know doesn't it doesn't have to be 90, 90 degrees of field of vision maybe maybe forty five would be kind of what you'd want so a thirty two inch display uh, four feet away maybe not much more than that if you want a thirty one degree viewing angle even thirty one I think is I'd like, to, I'd like to be more like 45, not 90, not all. Then you'd have to look left and right to see the edges. 45, that'd be good. It's just, it's, that's how it is. Our expectations have changed. And uh, that's fine. That's, you know, that's the, why not enjoy? Nowadays, we can't go to a movie theater. Why not enjoy the experience of a, of a big screen in your own home? Let's go to San Clemente. Joe's on the line. Hello, Joe. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? I am fantastic, actually. Uh, question for you. I have a son. going to be 21, obviously. Actually, nine days, believe it or not. Looking to do voiceovers. Uh, oh, interesting. I guess they told him. Well, he's, he's actually been doing uh, video editing and stuff. He went to college, wanted to do film and all that kind of stuff. My son did the same thing. He's 24, 25 now. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yep. Well, I actually went, actually went to community college, so I was very, very impressed with Saddleback Community. And um, Saddleback's very um, good. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Yeah. yeah. I was actually very impressed. Nice. Um, I actually, actually moved out to California from New Jersey five years ago, and there was a college there that was just as impressive. Morris County College, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. I honestly think that our community college system is true in California uh, especially, but our community college system is very good. And a great yeah. opportunity for for kids who don't want to go to a four year school, don't have the money. More importantly, to go to the four year school, you get a great education. I'm, I'm glad to hear uh, it. That's kind, good. Of, kind, of, kind of like me, not college material. I, I went to college for two weeks back in the day, <laughs> and then and then, the, yeah, then I'm going to computer school, and been doing that ever since. See, that's smart. So. That's smart. That's another thing. I think oh, we, yeah. we 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 kind of overvalue sometimes these expensive four year schools when really what you're trying to do is get a skill. You got a skill. Well, it would it would have cost like two hundred, like two, I probably about two hundred thousand dollars, fifty thousand dollars a year, believe it or not. Exactly. For, yeah. For schools like Chapman and all that, and yeah, because I think I'm out like maybe five thousand if I'm lucky. Yeah. So so the kid's doing video editing. He's uh, shooting. He's this is by the way very common in his generation. They grew up on YouTube, right? They get it. Uh, yeah, you know, he's, he, well, he wanted to be a film writer and director. Good for him. Uh, a screen, uh, I'm sorry, screenwriter and director. But, sure. You know, thankfully, he, did, he decided on editing, which does more work than that than the other thing. Yeah, well, that's how you start. Everybody starts at the beginning, right? So, oh, yeah. So he wants to do voiceover. Right. He's been told he's really good at it, but the problem is he's looking to buy a microphone, a, um, I believe a mixer, and headphones. So he, he probably doesn't, it's up to him, but he probably doesn't need a mixer. Um, the mixer is for mixing, but his voiceover is going to be him. Yeah. Let, unless he's going to do a bunch of other people, he probably could just get a microphone that connects directly to the computer, saving a little bit of money. Like a USB mic. Yeah, yeah that's a USB mic. 
The mixer will, if you know, you can use a much broader range of professional quality mics with a mixer, but it's a added expense. There is a company uh, called Behringer, B A H R I N G E R, that makes a, a number of products, including um, a podcast setup that is a mixer, a mic. You know, all of the stuff uh, you'd need. They make a variety of it, and they're fairly inexpensive. So when my daughter, similar age, in her 20s also, wanted to do a podcast, uh, I got her a little Behringer a mixer. So that's certainly one thing to look at. But you can also go out and get uh, either a USB mic or get a USB mic and interface, which is not exactly a mixer. And the quality will be just as good. I mean, I know for voiceover, he wants great quality, but he's got a laptop... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the uh, most expensive right. part of it. There's the editing software goes yeah. on that. So uh, headphones, you know, yeah, he's, that's... He's got all the software. Yeah. Headphones, that's, you know, how much you want to spend. You can spend anything from $20. Actually, you can spend everything from $5 to $5,000. You don't need better headphones. I use the ones I'm using right now, and I've always used, and every studio I know of uses these. They're 65 bucks. the AKG K240s. Very mm -hmm. comfortable. Widely used by studios, studio musicians, radio folk. So that's a good start. 64 bucks, not bad. AKG K240, you can find them on Amazon. For a microphone, now that's a little trickier because you want to get a microphone that is suits his voice. Does he have a deep voice? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I think for him, uh, uh, in, so there's two kind of styles of microphone. There's condenser mics. Those are the ones right. Beyonce uses in studio. But notice the studios are sealed. She's in a booth because condenser mics pick up everything. Right. They're super accurate. They're super expensive. But I like, and I'm using right now, a dynamic mic. That's the other kind. They're passive. They're a more old. They're an old-fashioned mic technology. But one of the nice things about uh, dynamic mics, they're good voice mics. They don't pick up, you know, they're they're what we call off-axis rejection. They don't pick up pick up room tone. You don't get a lot of room echo. You don't need a special room to do it. I'm not. I'm in just my office doing the show. The other thing they have that actually a lot of VO people like. You can you can get closer or farther, and there's something called the proximity effect. It gets deeper as you get closer. And you've seen comedians do this with the microphone. They'll get in real close, right? <laughs> it might be a nice effect for him to have. Um, now, my friend Jim Cutler, who is the king of voiceovers, I'm you know he has a voice booth, and I'm sure he uses a, a very high quality, probably a Neumann condenser mic, you know, two thousand dollar condenser mic. But I think for starting out, it'd be fine to get a Shure. Shure makes a number of very good mics. I use a three hundred fifty dollar mic right now. I've been using it for 15 years practically since we started the podcast network and I've been using it on a radio all this time. Nobody's ever said anything from a guy named Bob Heil. He's a well-known rock and roll sound guy. He did the quadraphonic sound for The Who for their Quadrophenia tour. He also invented, maybe to his deep regret, that mouth thing that Peter Frampton uses. And so, so he's very famous. He's also a ham and he created a, a microphone uh, called the PR40 that I think is a, one of the best voiceover mics ever. And it's about 350 bucks, which is really a good price for this. So the cheapest ones are Shure's, like the SM58. Mid-range, I would recommend a Heil PR40. That's from HeilSound.com. We'll put links in the show notes to all of this. Okay. And then I'm if driving. you're going to use a professional one like the Shure SM58 or the Heil, you'll need something like, and this is what we send all of our podcasters, we send them Heil mics, an arm, and then we sent him a Scarlet from a company called Focusrite. That turns it into a USB mic. And it has additional, you could actually put two mics in it if you want. It has some, it's like a mini mixer. But it turns it into USB. Because he was looking at Yeti and stuff like that. I, mean, we found I don't like the Yeti. That's a condenser mic. And it's very widely yeah. used by podcasters. I think you'd be better off with a Shure SM58 than a Yeti. All right, sounds good. Appreciate it. All right. Thank Thanks for the call. Good luck. That's a great thing to do to help him out. You want to sound just like Leo? K240 from AKG. Those are the headphones. Heil PR40. Focus right from Scarlet. <laughs> and what do we set at? Set you at about 500 bucks. And, uh, and, and you can do it. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. So Airshow, who's a pro announcer... 
He has one of them Neumann U87s. What is it? What is it, about 1500 bucks? How much was that? They're expensive. Uh, and I'm sure that's what Jim uses. But uh, I don't know. I like the Hiles. The Tech Guy Podcast brought to you this week by Last Pass. Every week. Here we are in the beautiful Last Pass studios, after all. We couldn't do it without your Last Pass. Uh, and frankly, I haven't been doing it without Last Pass for more than a decade. In fact, it was exactly 10 years ago that Steve Gibson discovered LastPass. So that means I'd been using it, I think, maybe for, well, since they started. I don't know how long is that, a dozen, 15 years? I'd been using it a long time. I told Steve about it. He went out, talked to the founder, looked at the code, said, you know what? These guys are doing everything right. The very famous Steve Gibson LastPass episode is now 10 years old. But LastPass is still going strong. And Steve's still using them. I'm still using them. In fact, we've really expanded our investment in LastPass because we use it now in the business, too. Twit is a LastPass enterprise. And honestly, if you're a business, this is maybe even more important than your own password hygiene, your own password security. Because after all, your business is running on data. And your employees have links, the logins, the passwords, the information to get into everything. Your bank account, your customer lists, your databases, your website. They've got it all. And if you're letting them write it on Post-it notes and stick it to the screen, put it on a website, put it in a spreadsheet, you're just cruising for trouble. you got to get LastPass Enterprise. They make it work so well. You secure every single entry point. From shadow IT to apps to mobile and cloud services, their access solutions give you visibility and control over every access point to your organization. And with employees going home, this is even more important. Plus, employees still get a secure, easy way to share passwords with each other. LastPass has a great facility for doing that. So much better. In fact, it works so well, I use it to share passwords with my wife. You know, for the, you know, the PG&E, you know, the electric bill and things like that. Just say, how do I log into Comcast? Here you go. How do I get Showtime? Here you go. It, it, and your employees will be doing the same thing. But they're doing it in a secure way. And by the way, with still having IT oversight, which is really important. They, LastPass is more than just password management. They offer single sign-on. I think 1,200 now, 1,300 single sign-on apps. That's great because your employees find it easier. It's more secure and easier for your employees. It's a win-win. I think LastPass is brilliant. And their multi-factor means that, of course, LastPass uses face recognition or fingerprint recognition to log into the vault. But they'll also use additional contextual pieces of information for authentication, things like your geolocation or your IP address, all of which mean you're much more confident that the people who are accessing your precious resources in a business are the people who are supposed to. And IT is always involved. You've got a great dashboard. You can always see what's going on. The other thing I love about LastPass is they do it right. That's what Steve verified 10 years ago, and it's still the case today. For instance, they never have access to your master password. That never leaves your site. Uh, the password vault encrypted with AES 256 bit encryption, encrypted in transit as well. And only you can decrypt it, and that means you're only decrypting it on device, on your phone, on your computer. And by the way, every device Windows, Mac, Linux, iOS, Android, every browser. That's the beauty of LastPass. Only you have access to your data. Not even LastPass does. And if LastPass can't get it, if, neither can hackers. If no one else has access to it, that's what you want. That's true. Trust no one encryption. We rely on LastPass, not just for our passwords, not just for single sign-on and multi-factor authentication. I even use it to store, like a secure enclave, to store important documents that I don't want anybody else to see. My social security number, my password, my driver's license. That's how safe it is. Last, having LastPass is like having that one place that no one else can get to. It's the perfect safe. LastPass.com slash twit. Secure your business. Give your IT department the tools it needs to keep your business safe. LastPass.com slash twit. Highly recommended. We're very happy and we're very grateful to LastPass, too, for the support, the wherewithal to do this show. Thank you, LastPass. Don't forget, you should, you should use this. LastPass.com slash twit. Now back to the show. See, I got my hygiene hand. 
I can hook onto doors. I use this at the ATM. <laughs> Listen. Boop. He's been everywhere, <laughs> man. He's Johnny Jetty. Ain't going nowhere, man. He's our travel guru. JohnnyJet.com. His podcast now is at JohnnyJet.com slash podcast. He's also, by the way, doing these great videos, 30 travel questions on his YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Johnny Jet. Hi, John. Hello. Thank you for the nice plug. Well, and, uh, I'm just, I'm glad we can keep you working. Hey, I appreciate it. Now and more than ever, still, we there's still plenty of work. We need you now because we're, it's starting to happen. People are, st the airlines are starting to book again. Yep. Uh, Although they, they just came out saying that the, the bookings were up and now they're dropping because because people are getting sick cases. again. Yeah, I yeah. mean, unfortunately, I know it's become political, but you got to wear a mask. And if you wear a mask, and if everyone wore it and, and followed the guidelines, we would have a lot more freedom than we have now. It is sad, isn't it? Not many countries that we're allowed to go into. Yeah, they're not accepting us because. So many Americans have COVID, and it's not because we're doing more testing either. We actually need to do more and more testing. Um, yeah, you can statistically it, look think, at it and say— I think say, Americans will wake up, yeah. and, we'll, and then it's going to open back up, and travel will open back up. I will start traveling. I haven't been on a plane because I don't want to be sitting next to someone that— could be having, uh, you know, could have COVID or asymptomatic and not wearing a mask. Right. You know, not all Chunk airlines are enforcing it. Chunky monkey in our chat room— <laughs> Probably not his real name, but I'm thinking maybe. He was just on an airplane. He says uh, he was impressed by how clean it was. He was wearing a mask. But Chunky Monkey was everybody, were, were all the other passengers wearing right. masks, especially the ones three rows, you know, a couple of rows ahead of you, a couple of rows behind you, same row. That's the question, right? You know? Right. And there was a, uh, there was an, I, I don't know if I talked about this a few weeks ago, but there was an Emirates flight from Dubai to Hong Kong, where 26 passengers tested positive. I think most of them were for Pakistan, and Pakistan has a, um, a high uh, COVID rate, but they were all tested before they got on the plane, and they didn't show up. But when they got to Hong Kong, Hong Kong's testing is incredible. I mean, it takes hours to get through it, and you got to quarantine. But then another th three passengers got it, and they showed on the map where they were sitting. And they, oh, yeah. it wasn't just like one section. It was everywhere, all over the plane, front, back, Aisle, window, middle. So, so that sounds like the ventilation system was circulating it. I mean, these planes all, all these modern planes all have HEPA filters, which are hospital grade. And it's it's not, I don't think it's the air. The air on the plane is fine. It's just people need to not fly when they're sick and they need to um, get tested so they make sure they're not sick and also uh, wear a mask. Chunky Monkey was on United. He says they everybody on the plane was wearing masks right on. Yep. They were very careful about sanitization. They are selling middle seats, but he said only to families, only to people in groups. So he I had think no. United is selling it to everybody uh, now. I think yeah. I mean, so I, United United will fill the plane. So will American. But United is the one airline that is really strictly enforcing it. Actually, their CEO just came out with a video this past week saying that you have to wear a mask on our plane. There's no ifs ands and buts. Nice. So there, nice. there, there, and there's a few other airlines that are taking it very seriously. They were like handing well. out uh, wipes as he got on board. They said, "Here's some wipes. You can wipe down the seat." And uh, yeah, it's just one good. single packet. They're small, so you got to bring your own. Bring your own. And actually, the, the TSA is allowing you to bring in bring 12 ounces oh, of hand sanitizer. hand sanitizer. Before you good. can only bring three ounces, 3.4. Good. good. So there are there are things you can do, and um, you know also with the TSA, by the way. What, what you're, if you're going through security, now you need to separate your food, put it in a clear cl plastic bag. Unless you have TSA pre, they don't they don't require it. But if you do not have the um, extra security, um, you need to separate it. That will, you'll go through a lot quicker. And and you don't want to put your bags and your wallet in one of those dirty trays. You want to make sure you put everything in your carry-on bag. Otherwise. You don't want those nasty germs. And, <laughs> and the TSA even did a you video said on that. that. You said that. You've been saying that for years. You said that long before COVID. Without doubt. <laughs> now and more than ever, you definitely want to do that. Yeah, yeah. But the way I get my travel fixed since I'm not traveling right now. What? Is I go, I go to YouTube and I watch Earth TV. And oh. I, you can do it on the computer, but it's way better on the big screen on your TV. Just leave it and running all day. every 10 seconds, 
it's a live webcam from around the world and they just change it every 10 seconds. I mute it because I don't like the, the, the groovy tunes they have, but you know, it's just so cool to see a, a live view of the Eiffel tower or, um, a child power. Oh, river. There's the Berlin uh, radio tower I'm seeing right now. Yeah. yeah. Every 10 seconds it will change. And it is, and I, I actually wrote a tip of it in my newsletter and I sent it out and a lot of my uh, readers and friends commented and said, this is amazing. I'm hooked on it. And it, I really do feel like I'm traveling and nice. at night before I go to bed, this is, uh, this know, is what I, um, you want to know what I, you know, it's funny people who like to travel and this is the time of year we'd probably be traveling. We're all finding ways to make ourselves feel better. Uh, I've been watching the Bravo reality show Below Decks. I've seen that once. Which is about yachting. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa and I binge it. And it's not quite like traveling, but it's a little more like traveling. Yeah, there's some drama on that show. There's a little too much drama. It's a reality <laughs> show. But they do go right. to exotic locations. So For sure. You know, they were in but Monaco this, this, and uh, we said, oh, we know that hotel. That's the hotel we stayed at, that kind of thing. Yeah. I, mean, I like these it, webcams. These are good. Now, here we are in Paris. Yeah. And and I, and I love how they show the, you know, the, the, the weather in Celsius and Fahrenheit. They show the current time. They show the wind speed. And I don't know if that's the, uh, the, the humidity or is that yeah, that's uh, humidity. chances of rain? That's humidity. So the, here's the problem. This makes me sad. <laughs> I want to be in Tenerife. Yep. I want to be there. Canary but, Islands. I, yeah. I've never been to the Canary Islands. Me neither. Looks I, a little hazy. Not a good place to go. I've been to, to most right of now. these places, but there's a few that I haven't. There's Davos. And I, I've been watching this Davos, Switzerland. It's always cold there. I'm talking 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's still 50 degrees right it's, now. It's chilly. Well, you're in the mountains. You're in the Alps. For sure. But, yeah. you know, once in a while. Where and the, the heck and by is the way, this? they're showing Czechia right now on the screen. Did you know that that's what the tourism now calls the Czech Republic? Czechia. Chechia. Huh. So it's Czech Republic, but it's called Chechia. That's what the tourism, that's what the slogan, that's what the Europeans okay. call it too. Like one of my buddies that. lives in okay. Europe and he said he's going there this See, week. And I was like, I'm learning already. This is almost as good as traveling. It's a lot cheaper. <laughs> that's the only thing we are saving money on our travel. So we're putting it into the house because we got to, you know, we got to live here. So, <laughs> so we're, we're putting money, the money we would spend traveling into the house because this is our new, uh, our new home. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're, we're actually we're not bringing money in, but we're saving money because we're not spending. Usually, we would have been gone every week this this summer. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah, but we're staying home. Um, Disney World is opening. Disney World opened. Actually, I just tweeted a picture that w someone sent. They are not social distancing in this photo, um, and you know what? I, I imagine they're going to close it down again because if these cases another keep epicenter. going up, yeah. They, they can't keep going. I mean, Florida, the, the testing rate the other day was 33% or something positive, and that's insane. It should be, I think, under 12, the experts say. Holy cow. And that's still too high. This is not, not, who, geez, Louise, they're all lined up to get to the Seven Dwarves train. They're so all that jammed continues. together. I, I imagine they're going to shut it down. Oh, man. And that's the problem. I mean, people you not only need to wear masks, they look like they're all wearing masks, and Disney will be strict about that, but you need to separate. Right. So, uh, I, I, listen, they're outside. I, I worry more about you. when you get in the ride. Did you see? <laughs> they're opening roller coasters in Japan and other countries, but you have you have to ride them without screaming, which is actually quite a challenge. Uh, we, sh we, we looked at a video the other day of two uh, roller coaster amusement park executives wearing their masks, riding the roller coasters without screaming. In a suit. In a suit. Very yeah. straight. But at the end, I noticed when he lifted his hand off, it was shaking a little bit. Just a little bit. I think it was not easy. That, that's not, that, that's not going to work. People are going to uh, scream. You got to scream. Oh, what fun is and it? Those masks are going to go flying off. JohnnyJet.com. That's the website. Podcast is there. You'll also have a link to his YouTube channel. Lots of great articles. Look, if you can't travel, at least you can go to that webpage and enjoy. Johnny Jet, thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Oh, man. I love that cam. I'm going to do that. I actually wish they did, had a version without the weather. Really? Yeah, I don't, I just want to see the pictures. I got you. you. You know what? Maybe if you go, if you search for that location, you can probably find it. Because right. I think that's an Earth, that's an Earth uh, TV function but once you do log on to that then you know your uh, cookies are going to start sending you other live cams and i've been 
I've, I've found some that are around the corner from my house, like the Redondo Beach Cam, so I can see what the weather's like um, if I if I want to go to the beach or yeah, something like nice. that. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, EarthCam.com. They have no. You don't. You don't want to go to EarthCam.com. No. They they have crazy ads. That's why I oh. like this. Uh, oh. The Earth. The Earth TV. Earth TV. Because I mean, EarthCam's great, but you know they make you watch like a thirty second. Oh, ad I see. That's time. a different thing. Okay. Earth TV. I think it might be the same company. It's just a different channel. And so let's say if you like that Paris webcam, then just go search live uh, Paris webcam. Yeah, yeah. But what I, I do like the idea of rotating. Yeah, there's earthtv.com. I like the idea of rotating. I just wish that they didn't have the... Yeah, earthtv.com has I, I, all I of the cameras. I actually love the weather. I, you I'm don't a mind weather, the weather fanatic. Yeah. My wife says, she's like, I could care less. I'm like, I sit and watch the weather every day. Local weather and all around the world. Here's the world live in standard English. And by the way, I, I, I watched your earlier it. segment. You said the Burj. I think the Burj is still the tallest building in the world. Really? I thought there was one in like Saudi Arabia. They were supposed to have one, but I don't think they. I don't think they've, they've ever, ever completed it. it. Hey Google. Hey, hey Google. What's the tallest building in the world? Come on, talk to me, Google. I've, I've muted everything. I think it's Burj Khalifa. Okay. Well, then I've been to the, in the tallest building. I've been, been to the top. You can't go all the way to the top. But we went pretty high. We went to the highest, when I went, highest you can go. It just opened it. Oh, it was cool. It was expensive. And now I'm getting, uh, you know, junk mail from them. But I, I heard that. It was like very well run. Uh, it was kind of crazy. But we got some great. I showed you my pictures from up there. There, it was really fun. We had fun. Dubai is an interesting place. What is? <laughs> yeah, I'm never going back. But I was there once. That's good. It was good. It was once was enough. We'd spent a long time there, like four or five days. So I feel like I did it. I feel like I did Dubai. Yeah, I like Abu Dhabi a little bit better. I've been to Abu Dhabi. Maybe I'll go back. It's only like a two-hour, I think it's a two-hour drive, if that. What is the tallest building in the world? Yeah, still the Burj. Okay, I thought it wasn't for some reason. Yeah, well, I remember in the news a couple of years ago, they were talking about Saudi Arabia yeah. was going to create. And then but, actually Dubai's building another one with two towers. They're, they have to have guy lines. They're so tall. Guy wires to hold them up. They're so tall. I, I mean, I, I'm sure you've seen those um, time lapses of old Dubai and new Dubai. And oh, how it's fast. wild. Yeah, we went to the Dubai it's Museum. Insane. They have a lot of the old Dubai stuff. Well, it was nothing. It was a fishing village. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Hey, John, take care of yourself, my Thank friend. You I'm glad. Tell your sister I'm glad she's doing better. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. See you later. Take Bye -bye. care. Bye-bye. Oh, I see it all around me. It's because we're all stuck together in the same place for so long. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888-ASK-LEO, the phone number. Max on the line from Newport Beach. Hello, Max. Hi, Leo. <clears throat> Leo, I have two questions. Yes, sir. We need a printer. Okay. Uh, and my wife wants a, she wants one with the color option. She wants it wireless. We don't have one right now. And and un, and compact, you know, as small as we can get. Okay. And uh, you know, not complicated. Not complicated. So, almost all of them are wireless these days. The days of printing by uh, the USB port or heaven forfend the printer port, those are those are long gone. Thank goodness. Most of them are wireless. If you have Wi-Fi in the house, um, yes, they'll be easy to print to from anywhere in the house. The printer goes on the Wi-Fi network. Uh, color. You know, you can get color in both laser and inkjet, but generally speaking, uh, if you want vivid color, I would go with inkjet. Now, the downside to inkjet is that if you don't use it on a regular basis, the heads can get clogged, which means you have to use up ink to clean them out. It can be a little bit of a pain. So if you're printing, if you're printing a couple of times a week, no problem. Would no, you? we don't use we don't use it that much. So, okay. what was the other one called? So the well, these aren't brands; these are technologies. Laser printing is 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 kind of ideal for 
just occasional printouts. Quality is very good, and they don't they don't doesn't use heads. It's kind of like the same. It's like the Xerox technology, like the photocopier technology. It's a similar technology. Um, the color though isn't bright. It's not for you. Wouldn't print photos with it. What does she want the color for? No, we're not going to print photos. Just just in general. So yeah. The laser printer sounds the right one. Do you have a recommendation on a? A brand or model? Yeah, I do. Uh, the, I'm going to say a couple more things because I'm giving the general first, then I'll give you the specifics. There, most of the printers nowadays are what we call all-in-ones or multifunction, where they scan, print, fax, uh, copy. Uh, you that makes it more complicated, and it also makes it bigger. So you said you wanted small and simple. You're going to want to avoid a multifunction printer unless you need a scanner. I mean, it's a nice way to go. It's kind of they're more for like offices, home office, that kind of thing, because you know has all those functions. Brother makes a very inexpensive, like like really inexpensive laser printer that'll go. The way they save money is the first toner cartridge they put in there only does a few hundred pages, but then when you go out and you buy your next one. And you'll go, because they're 100 bucks for the printer cartridge, but it'll last 5,000 pages. So, you know, just be aware of that. Um, I actually have a, a brother uh, laser at home that I love. Never gave me any problems. And because I don't print very often. But I just, but I want it to work when I print, right? So I think, I think they make very inexpensive, very nice laser printers. So I would have no hesitation recommending a brother. I don't remember what my model number is, but... If you go to the website, you'll see, and you can choose it based on, you know, the functions and the size. But as I remember, it wasn't, I, I actually, you know what, I bought it on Amazon, so I bet I can find it on Amazon. I'll tell you what I could, I don't think it was very expensive. Um, what, other, what other laser printers? I don't, you know, Samsung also makes them. Uh, I do know that, um, you know, HP also makes them. They're very widely used in offices, but I think I'm not a big fan. And actually, you're not going to want to get the brother that I got because it is a scanner, fax, and all of that stuff. And for all of that, it was a couple. It was two forty nine. So I think you can get a simple brother uh, that doesn't do all the scanning and all that other stuff. Probably around a hundred bucks, I would guess. Who 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 carries those? Do you know a um, killer? If you don't want to buy online, because Amazon has them all, but if you don't want to buy online, all the office stores, Office okay. Depot, that kind of thing, they all have them, and uh, they'll actually be a good place to go so you can see them in person and kind of right. get a I sense. Like yeah, we're old school. The yeah. other question I have for you, real quick, is my wife has an iPhone 10. She drives a Toyota. She is getting drop calls, drop calls, drop yeah. calls all the time when she's hooked up. We put it, we uh, tried it in another car. This has been going on for a while. We've been back to the dealer. Did it work fine in the other car? No. Same thing. So it's the, and I've been so Apple, when system. they came out with the iPhone 10, this is when I started to hear these problems. It's not unusual. And I think it's an incompatibility with the way Bluetooth is configured in those older vehicles. You know, there's a mismatch between the speed with which these phones come out and the speed with which cars are updated. And a brand new car, you might not have those problems, but a car that's a few years old, suddenly you're using an older Bluetooth technology. Um, does she keep it in her pocket or purse, or does she actually take it out? She takes it out. Okay. Yeah, no, she takes it out. So... Uh, well, I have a newer vehicle, so I'm going to have her try it, set it try up. Try it in the newer that. vehicle, yeah. Because okay. um, that's honestly a problem. Now, if, I mean, there you can always get a little Bluetooth adapter that's more up-to-date that will have the latest technologies like Bluetooth 4.2 or even Bluetooth 5, and it might work better with that iPhone. You're not, the only reason I say that is uh, when the iPhone 10 came out, all of a sudden I got a lot of calls like that. It won't work. It won't pair. It drops. Blah blah blah. Uh, so, and, and and in fact, I think as I remember, oh yeah, somebody in the chat room saying this is the case. Toyotas, in particular, <laughs> right, had had some troubles uh, with these. Um, let me see. I'm looking at a thread. We'll put this in the show notes at TechIlabs.com. It's an Apple support thread, two five zero seven one two eight four nine, that talks about problems with Toyota. No solution. Troubleshooted for hours with Apple. 
Um, so one person said, I had success turning off, this is weird, LTE and the cellular roaming function. Haven't dropped a call since. That would be related not to the car or the phone, but in fact to the carrier. So um, somebody got an update from t his Toyota 4Runner. And since the update calls aren't disconnecting, so that would imply that maybe it's a software issue uh, with the Toyota. No, it's been updated. We just had it in the last week. And they updated uh, it. Yeah. yeah uh, Try uh, it in your more modern car. Uh, okay. uh, you know, and then uh, is it the calls are dropping or the connection is dropping? The calls are dropping. Oh, okay. That's a different issue. So your Bluetooth is still fine? Yeah, she, everything else is working. The musical play. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were dropping Bluetooth. Yeah, that can just be, you know, put the put the phone in the, in the window. Uh, that could just be the, the antenna is not good enough in the area. And it's going to be very specific to the area you're in. That's one where turning off LTE might help. Uh, it uh, might it might put you on a, a different network. That's good. That's very specific to the carrier, the region you're in, and it may be the car. It's not the Bluetooth. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I thought you were dropping the Bluetooth. It's If the call's dropping, that's another matter entirely. Put the phone somewhere where it's in the in the window. I know with Sun, that's an issue, so be aware of that. But uh, okay, so it's, it's an antenna issue. And the LTE. Yeah. Yeah, turn off the LTE. And you, you can get external antennas for the car that will connect to the phone. That seems like a great expense and elaborate solution. Do you, the, do you think the adapter might help? Yes, it might. Actually, kind of acts, act, anything plugged into the earphone port actually acts as an antenna. Okay. So well, there's no All earphone right. port on the uh, on the uh, iPhone 10, but you can plug it into the power port. Yeah, the, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. I get, took a completely wrong turn there. <laughs> it wasn't the Bluetooth at all. I misunderstood. It's dropping calls. And that's, you know, look, I have an iPhone 10, had an iPhone 10 for years, never dropped a single call. That's carrier and region specific. And maybe that particular car has a lot of metal in it. It has nothing to do with Bluetooth, I apologize. I completely misled you. <sighs> Sigh. Got to pay attention, Leo. This is my favorite Burj Khalifa pictures because Lisa's hanging out <laughs> over the edge of the balcony to get that shot. She's a very brave woman. Uh, fortunately, she had the camera strapped tightly to her body. They say, do not lean out over the balcony. I got it right here. Wait a minute. There it is. Look at this. You know what that is? No, that's not an Amazon Echo. It's very stylish, though. You wouldn't mind having that in your living room. That's the Simply Safe base station. Simply Safe is home security done right. You know what the number one sign of a bad home security system is? One you don't use because it's so complicated. <laughs> you can't remember the codes, the setup. You just leave it off. Eh, I got a sign in the yard. At least I got that. Not Simply Safe. It's exactly the kind of security system Simply Safe has spent a decade fighting against. They believe that simple is safer. It's in their gosh darn name. Simply Safe. It's the home security for right now. Uh, when feeling safe at home has never been more important. Easy to use, protect your whole home 24-7. Uh, the base station is amazing. You can hit it with a baseball bat. You can torch it, and it will still get the police out. And by the way, police respond better to Simply Safe because Simply Safe's professional monitoring can verify there's an incident with the Simply Safe sensors and cameras. They've got everything: windows, glass break, cameras, motion. Even water detection, smoke and CO detection. They've got it all. You pick the sensors you want. You install them yourself. Nobody trapes in through your house. It's contactless. You set it up, and it just works. And by the way, you're paying, in my case, a third of what I was paying for 24-hour, for seven-day-a-week monitoring. Just $15 a month with no long-term contracts. That's nothing. 50 cents a day for professional monitoring and emergency dispatch. 50 cents a day. Simply Safe was named best overall home security of 2020 by US Neuros and World Report. Uh, I just love it that I didn't have to have anybody come to the house. I can just put those sensors up myself. Pick exactly, by the way, pick exactly the sensors I wanted. Monitor things. I got one out in the garage to water, monitor the water heater, right? The worst thing. 
once you've ever had a water leader heat, a heater leak, you don't want to have another one. I don't have to worry now. I'll know. And it all comes down to this great Simply Safe base station. Simply Safe is awesome. No outrageous fees. No technicians traipsing through your house. No contract at all. SimplySafe.com slash twit. You'll get free shipping and a 60-day money-back guarantee. What's not to love? SimplySafe.com slash twit. Make sure you use that address so they know you, that, that you heard it on our podcast. Don't worry. SimplySafe.com slash twit. Really works. Now back to the show we go. Thank you, Simply Safe. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Time to talk computers, the internet, home theater, digital fart photography, <laughs> digital photography. 8888 Ask Leo. That's another thing entirely. Digital photography. 888 827 5536 Toll free from anywhere in the US or uh, Canada. Outside that area, still can reach me. Still can reach me, but you just got to use some ingenuity. Use Skype out or something like that. 8888-ASK-LEO. Let's go to Fort Lauderdale. David's on the line. Hi, David. Hello, David. Uh-oh. I think David wandered away or else he's muted. Sometimes, David, I don't know if you've muted your phone because you've been on hold so long, but if you have, unmute. Nope. All right, well, I'll just, here's what I'll do. I'll just put you on hold. We'll see what we can figure out and move on. Uh, now we're on the line with uh, Nuss, also in Florida, Palm Beach. Hello, Nuss. Hey, Leo. Am I saying your name right? How do you say your name? Yeah, yeah, you said it correctly. Nuss. Is that short so for something? Mm -hmm. What's no. that? Nope. Yeah. Just nice short name. I like it. Yeah. What can I do for um, you, sir? Well, first, I want to thank you. You've been listening for a long, long time. And nice. uh, you have accompanied me on my walks, my drive, <laughs> everywhere. Nice, Nuss. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. And I'm grateful. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, until I've been using uh, Google Duo for a long time. Yeah, that's their video calling, their version of FaceTime, basically. Yeah. And, and it's been working nice. I've even had shortcuts to call my uh, grandchildren right away. Oh, isn't that great? Uh, isn't that a great feature? Yeah. I love that. And uh, uh, recently, uh, however, in the last few days, it stopped working. When I when I click on it, it uh, it it thinks of me as a brand new customer oh. to set up your duo. And I don't know if it's a coincidence or has to do with me changing uh, launchers. I, yeah, it I shouldn't don't. be the launcher. It, basically, Duo is, because it's a Google product, tied to your Google account. Is your is your yeah. Google account working on other things like Gmail yeah. and stuff? Yeah? Yeah, and no, no, no problem anywhere else. And all my life is connected to Google. Yeah, yeah. Whether you want to or not, I think that's true for everybody. Uh, <laughs> I, I surrender. In the I end. surrender. I surrender to our overlords. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I use Duo uh, because one of my family members, my daughter, is an Android user, so she can't use right. FaceTime. I use FaceTime with my mom, uh, right. but I use Duo with my uh, my daughter, and it's it's really great. So when you first launch uh, Duo, you don't see your previous calls and all that stuff? It's like it's brand new? It looks like brand new. What it says, it says, set up your Duo. Oh, that's and weird. It, uh, and, and it's showing my phone number, and, um, and, and I have an option to click uh, Agree. Yeah, so it's starting fresh, as if it didn't know yeah. you. In once yeah. you set it up in the settings of du of Google Duo, it shows uh, what account you're using. So there's the three dots yeah. in the upper right hand corner, and you can say you can you know click that, and then the very first setting will say what account. It'll have your Gmail address if that's what you use to create the account, and and your phone number, you know the one it associates with you. Um, there is though in that. Menu item, remove Google account from Duo or sign out of Duo on this device. If you hit that nope. by accident, no? No. Didn't do that. Well, no. can you can you just go through the setup again? Does it work? 
You mean on Duo? Yeah, why don't you just go through it again? Or does it... Ne or do uh, you know, it, I'm going in circles to so the same thing. Oh, it doesn't remember it. It doesn't remember me. Got okay. it. Uh, uh, all it says is something went wrong. That's something went I'm wrong. Saying. Okay, that means it can't store the information. So have right. you tried uninstalling it and reinstalling it just out of curiosity? Um... I don't know if I did. I don't. I would try that. You know, oh, you know what? What? I, I now I remember. I tried. Yeah. I tried to. Um. I tried to un, you know, uninstall it. It would not go anywhere. Interesting. All right. Yeah. Which so phone are you, Which phone are you using? Uh, I'm, I'm using an Android phone. But which Which one? Yeah. It's it's a Huawei. Okay. Uh, Have you run? Oh, it's Huawei. Oh, that's interesting. You know, Huawei has been told you may not use Google anymore. Now, I don't know if that's only on the newer Huawei phones. Obviously, yours used to. I wonder if that's okay. related. Did you get an update from Huawei recently? No, no, no. That's actually another issue I wanted to ask you about because, I, you know, I want to change phones. I had this for two years I've now. got good news for you. Go yeah. Google's about to release uh, their newer phone, which I would highly recommend. You know, the, the current flagship Google phone is the Pixel. But yeah. they're, they're uh, the Pixel 4, but they're about to release the Pixel 4a any minute now, I think. And that will be low, lower cost, maybe yeah. $400 instead of $800, and is going to be a really good phone. Plus, the Pixel 5s do. And, by the way, Samsung's about to have an event in uh, August 5th. They'll announce the new Samsung Galaxy Note, one of my favorites. That's a pricey phone, though. That's one with a stylus and everything. But, yeah, it might be time to get off the Huawei platform because yeah. they have been... Uh, that Google cannot do business with them anymore. Right, I'm aware of that. And I yeah. Was now that older phone uh, shouldn't be affected by that because it, you it came with the Google apps. Yeah. But I wonder if maybe this is kind of a symptom of that. Also, make sure you're not running out of space on the phone. Do you have enough free space? Oh yeah, I have tons of tons. Free space okay. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. And now, and now I figured a way. To un uninstall Duo. Oh, good. So Uninstalling I, it and reinstalling it should fix it. So what's happening, and this happens, you've seen this probably before in us, uh, is you get uh, you get a situation where the phone can't save the settings. It's trying to, it has to save that locally. And, you know, what your account is and all that stuff. So that it'll, when it opens, it'll get it again. If for some reason it can't save, maybe the folder that it's saving to, permissions accidentally got changed. That can happen so that you can't write to it. Or it's, that's why I asked if you'd run out of room, because that would be another way that that could happen. Yeah. Usually, uninstalling the app and reinstalling it will refresh the app's data storage and start over. If that doesn't work, there are ways to clear the data cache out on that phone. It's in the reset area of the phone settings. Now, I just tried. Uh, sorry. Um, go ahead. I just tried to un uninstall it, although I have an option here to click uninstall. But when I click on it, it won't do it. It won't, it right. won't do anything. So there, that this is definitely a disk problem. So what I'm going to suggest you do is go into the settings on your phone. And I'm not sure about the app, you know, the setting structure under Huawei because it can be different depending on the manufacturer. But somewhere there'll be an apps entry under settings. And you can go yeah. through all of your apps. And what you want to yeah. do is go to the Duo app and right. you're going to see a bunch of settings. This is kind of the black diamond area, right? Including right. permissions, storage and cache, and more. Clear your storage and cache. There's going to be a button to clear cache and clear storage. That's the first thing I'd do. What that does is it resets the data area. That's almost as good as deleting it. You can, by the way, uninstall it from this 
menu, it might be a more effective way. But the first thing I do is, and this is anytime you have problems with an app on Android, this is a very good thing to do. Just go to clear storage, clear cache. That'll delete out all the data, including your account information. And with any luck, now when you set up the account, it's, it'll say, oh, yeah, 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 and everything will be back to normal. Okay, I'll give it a try. Nuss, I and, appreciate it. And and about that phone, uh, you, you said it's, a, it's the Pixel 4? Pixel 4a is, I think, imminent. We thought it would be out by now, but I think it'll be out in July because uh -huh. they've stopped selling the 3a. That's usually a sign that, you know, must be time for the 4a and the 5 will be coming out probably next month so if if you if you're thinking i think it's time to get a new phone those huawei's by the way i loved them i thought they were great it's it's really a sad situation i think it has more to do with the trade war than anything else but yeah, google it's been working fine I mean, oh it's uh, a great it's phone i had a p20 it was they have some of the best cameras on the market um, yeah. But uh, Google was informed by the U.S. Department of Commerce that they cannot do business with Huawei. So Huawei has of its own version of Android now, minus all the Google stuff, including Duo. So uh, I wouldn't get a new Huawei phone. In fact, it's hard to get. They they don't sell them direct in the U.S. Yeah, I, I got it while traveling in uh, you know in Asia. They're great phones. Yeah, I'm I'm a, fond this of them. Is a seven point. Uh, 7.2 or 7.3 inches. Wow. You know, oh, well, if you like big phones, you're going to yeah. want to look at the Galaxy Note August 5th. It'll be well, the Note 20. Yeah, that, maybe I'll wait. Because, those, uh, those are expensive, but boy, are those nice phones. Well, expensive. They're all now around... Uh, They're all a thousand know, bucks, yeah. thousand, twelve hundred, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah, but I mean, no more cheap phones anymore. Well, there are, and that's why I like the 4A. Google is still making inexpensive uh, phones, the A series how, phones. How big is it? How big is it? Uh, know? I think it's 5.7. I think. 5 it's smaller 5 than that phablet of yours. I can't believe how big that is. Seven inches? Yeah, yeah 7.2. <laughs> that's, that's huge. How do you? Yeah. <laughs> that's a tablet. I know it's a. I don't need a tablet with this one. No, you, that's actually really. I love big phones. I'm not a. I am. There's no shame in that. I. I. That's one of the reasons I always got the Galaxy Note every year. I'll probably get it again this year. Google yeah. doesn't make a phone that big. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. You know, I, but it, don't they have like one that's six point five or something? Yeah, like yeah. That's the no, that's the XL version of the. Uh, Pixel 4. They make a 4XL. Yeah. That's what I have right now. It's not as big. Right. It's not a tablet of your, like yours, but right. it's big I enough. Know. And it, the reason I go with Google in general is they keep their phone more up to date than any other manufacturer. They make Android, so of course it's going to be this most secure Android phone. So, and yeah. you know, if you if you have an older Android phone, that's problematic. So I. That's why I use it. You know, that's why yeah. I like to use Google. Yes, uh, exactly. Exactly. Now, if you're I a Duo fan, you're going to want to, you're definitely going to want to stick with Google. I used to use uh, a OnePlus. I love OnePlus, I too. They're very yeah, good. I, I, yeah, I lost it in, in the water in Asia. And oh, man. So I, so I bought, you know. Uh, that's I bought that's the, when you got your Huawei? Yeah. Uh, it's the Mate. The one I have is the Mate 20. X. Yeah, the twenty. Okay. Yeah, that's a that is a that's a tablet basically. Yeah. 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 So very nice. Very anyway, nice. Thank you very much. Uh, My pleasure, Nuss. Nice. Yeah, go into the app settings. You know, it's settings yeah. and then apps, and then go look for duo, clear the cache, clear the storage. If that doesn't work, you can probably uninstall it from that. That's a little more powerful. That's the power user section of the of the settings, the apps. Nice to meet you, Nuss. Call back again anytime. I think we're going to see new phones soon. You know, we're already getting a lot of rumors about the iPhone 12. They'll all be 5G, all these new phones. Google's going to probably do less expensive 5G. The story is the carriers, you know, all the f current 5G phones are very expensive, 1000 plus. And the carriers are saying, we need $400 5G phones. Who's going to make it? Google's apparently raising its hands, saying, mm, oh, 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 I will. I will. So expect, I think, <laughs> I don't think the 4A will be, but the 5 
and I suspect there'll be a 5A right away, will be 5G phones using the latest. And by the way, who cares? You probably don't have 5G in your neighborhood. Very few people do. But, you know, if you want to future-proof it, you'll probably have it in a couple of years. You might want to wait for a 5G phone. I certainly would, uh, if you're going to get Android, it's it's at least go with the big guys. Google is probably your best bet for security. Samsung, I think OnePlus is probably fine. They have a very nice uh, track record with updates. Got to be careful, though, with Android. Older Android phones are deadly. They're dangerous. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888. Ask Leo the phone number. Got to be real. Let's go back to the phones. Um, line four. Let's try them again. David in Fort Lauderdale. David. Yeah, hello, hey, Leo. There he is. Thank you since the call for help days. Oh, my goodness. 1998 through 2004. Yep. Holy okay. cow. My question is about the iPhone. Yes, sir. When I'm using pod, the app, podcast app or YouTube app, I can listen to it in the background while I'm doing something else. Right. While I'm checking my mail or surfing the internet or something. But YouTube TV, when I'm listening to YouTube TV and as soon as I switch to check my mail, YouTube TV shuts off. Dang nabbit! It doesn't go to a uh, it doesn't go to a little uh, a little uh, picture in picture window, huh? Nope. No. So, it, good news. It will <laughs> as soon as iOS 14 comes out. That's one of the features they added to iOS 14. It's on the iPad now, but when you're watching video on an iPad and you do something else, it swoops down into a little picture-in-picture. Picture. That's never been a feature on the iPhone because it doesn't have a huge screen, but it is something they're adding to iOS 14. So, uh, a couple of things. Apple traditionally has been really careful about letting things run in the background. In the earliest days of the iPhone, nothing ran in the background except Apple's own stuff. Apple Music did. But Spotify didn't, for instance. All right. Over the years, and that's because anything running in the background is using battery, right? So Apple's always been very aggressive about killing background apps, background processes to save battery life. Over the years, they started to ease up a little bit. So what you'll find is some apps do, some apps don't. Those apps that don't, they haven't written it in yet. But the good news, at least with YouTube TV, is that's coming. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. You could, if you were ambitious and adventurous, you could do it now because they have what's called a public beta of iOS 14. Which iPhone do you have? Uh, it's still iPhone 7. Still work going strong. Yeah, I think iPhone 7. I mean, it might be a little... Look, it's really... It's, it's, it's a public beta, which means it's a little bit more stable than the developer-only beta, but it is pre-release software. It won't be out till September. So it's kind of how, how important is this background? Let me just real quickly make sure it works. So you said YouTube TV, their, uh, their TV show thing, right? Right. Yeah, let me just try it real quickly because I put iOS 14 on my... Um, so I'm going to watch. We got golf going on. Oh, I got to verify real quickly. Allow. This is all the new stuff. Is that Apple's been very good about... Um, okay, so now I'm watching... I thought I was watching golf. There we go. I'm watching golf. Uh, now, you said I want to start email. Oh, see, yeah, I see it. It's closing. Let me, um, let me, maybe if I go full screen and swipe out of it. Yeah, no, it doesn't do it yet. Yeah, see, when I'm listening to a podcast, if I'm listening to you. Are you using the Apple podcast app? Because that will do it. Yeah, the Apple Podcast app. Because they support background on the Apple Podcast app, but not all podcast apps. So that that would be a, so. Here, I'll for instance, I'll be I'm listening to a podcast here. But you know what? The regular YouTube. It's still playing. Allows you to do stuff in the back. Yeah, background. YouTube will. Yeah, and I don't know if that's something that maybe YouTube TV. Uh, maybe they opted out. You know, it's kind of up to them to do it, right? 
So it could well be that that's something YouTube decided. Let me see if the picture in picture is working on YouTube. It may be that is exactly what happened, which is uh, they didn't they didn't want. So now I've got a. How do I get the? Google does not allow YouTube picture in picture even on iPad Pro. So that's Carmine in the chat room. However, here's a workaround. Ah, this is a good workaround. Carmine says, if you launch it in the browser... Oh, background play is on. Okay, so now it's going to background play on YouTube. Ah, yeah, I see what he's saying. Okay. But good to try in the browser, because then you're not running a YouTube app. You're running Apple's Safari. Very clever. Let me clever. That's good, Carmine. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Leo. Have a good day. All right, you too. Bye bye. Oh. Now I've got YouTube running. I can't turn it off. <laughs> I can't, turn, can't turn it off. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Great tip from Carmine in our chat room. Good idea. I didn't even think of this. If you want to get something to run in the background like YouTube TV and the app won't run in the background on the iPhone, if you go to it in Safari and watch in Safari, the browser, it will because Safari is Apple's program, so it can run in the background. Oh, that's clever. Clever idea. And uh, I do think there's picture, and Carmine's mentioning the picture in picture I don't know if there's picture in picture yet for a YouTube TV. There ought to be. Let me just uh, see here. Uh, in the new uh, iOS 14, that would be awesome, right? It's weird to, to have picture in picture on uh, <laughs> on a um, phone because it's not a very big thing. It won't let me watch. So there's uh, definitely a bug with YouTube TV and iOS uh, 14. Okay, now I'm watching. Let's see. Let's go bigger. And then I tap the picture-in-picture picture button. Where is that? I don't know. Yeah, I can't quite figure it out. Would be nice, though, wouldn't it? Just have a little tiny, teeny-weeny thumbnail while you're reading your mail on your phone. The phones are big enough now to do that, I guess. Uh, if you want to, if you really... Uh, brave and bold and you want to go try those beta versions of iOS 14 or tvOS 14. I think watchOS is updated too. If you go to beta.apple.com beta.apple.com they have all the instructions there. At some point I think we're going to get the uh, public beta of Big Sur which is the new version of macOS, macOS 11. Public betas are an interesting thing. Mo many uh, Tech companies have started doing this. Beta always meant kind of not ready for prime time. When software is being written, you know, you can get a version that runs early on in the process. And sometimes the companies that write software will say, you know, we should test this with a larger group of people. There's an alpha, which is very considered, you know, this is really early version of this. It may be very unreliable. But if you know that and you're willing to try it, we could, we would love the, you know, feedback. There's beta, which is a little better than alpha. I don't think they ever get to gamma. I think they just go to release after that. So alpha, beta, and then release. Obviously, normal people, people who don't have an adventurous streak will want to always stick with release. Because even the release versions, let's face it, are buggy. But lately, uh, Microsoft's been doing this, Apple's been doing this, other companies have been doing it. They say, all right, we're going to have a private beta period of time, get this at least a little polished, then we're going to have a public beta. And Apple just launched the public beta this week for iOS, and I think for Big Sur in the next week or two. It's for people who, I, my recommendation would be don't do it unless you're so interested in the new features or there's a new feature you, I got to have this picture in picture or something like that, then maybe. And I would probably not do it to your one and only phone because if it doesn't work, and, and, you know, problems happen. This is not fully tested. If it doesn't work, then at least you have another phone you can use or another computer or another watch. That's actually the biggest problem with the watch is Unlike the phone, the phone and the computer, you can back them up and roll back. There's no way to really back up the watch. 
So I'd be very careful about using any pre-release software on the watch, the Apple Watch. What that's a one-way ticket. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it's a it's a it's a you're going to mail it into Apple situation. My watch, I broke it. Uh, but the public betas are out, and at least this time they've been pretty stable. At Microsoft's had a kind of checkered history with this. For the last, oh, well, I think many years, really, uh, Microsoft's had what they call the Insider Program, where if you want to be a Windows Insider or an Office Insider, you can try their software early in the public beta mode. Uh, and they've been doing this uh, for months, sometimes a year before they release the final version. Millions of people may try this software and, and the, or even use it day to day in the public beta. You would think that as a result, that when the final version of Windows comes out or Office comes out, it would be perfect. Man, many, many, many people, millions of people have used this and reported back their problems and issues. So Microsoft's had time to fix it. You would think. In fact, Microsoft was so bullish on this whole thing, they fired their testing team. Most companies have in-house quality assurance testers. Microsoft had a very big team of people who would test the software before they released it to the public. They fired them. We don't need it anymore. We've got a great insider program. Oh, man, this is good. We're testing this. Every machine, and, you know, it's hard with Windows because Windows runs on, you know, they, it's supposed to run basically on any PC. Lots of possible configurations. Lots of other software and drivers and hardware you might be interacting with. This is a nightmare. And, you, you know, you want to test this like crazy. So they do. They got rid of the testers, but we have this insider program. It does not work. <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if Microsoft's getting the feedback and ignoring it. I don't know. Most recently, they've released the spring update to Windows 10. They call it Windows 10 2004. The 04 means it was supposed to come out in April of 2020. It started to come out in, you know, June. And it's not, a lot of people haven't got it yet. You may not have got it. You know, interestingly, nobody who has a Microsoft brand Surface computer has it, or very few do. You would think that would be the most tested of all. But they, there's something going on. They can't get it. Something, some incompatibility. And many of the people who have Windows 10 2004 wish they didn't. All sorts of problems, up to and including the worst kind of problem you can have, which is data loss. So I don't know if it's because they fired the testers. I don't know if it's because even though they're doing these very widespread public betas, they're not listening. But something's gone wrong. And, and it's very possible that the real problem is just simply it's almost an insolvable problem because there are a billion, almost close to a billion Windows 10 users and almost every single one is unique in the software they're using, the hardware they're using, the situations they're using it in. Almost everyone is unique. It would, I guess, be impossible to put out a piece of software that every one of those billion people could say, yeah, this is perfect. No flaws at all. Perfect. And if you think about it, even if one in a hundred thousand or one in a million, even if one in a million has a problem, that's a thousand people who are going to go on the internet and say, Microsoft killed my computer. I'm so mad. And a thousand people saying that, that's a lot of people. That's, that's fewer than one in a million, but it's still enough people that you might say, wow, they're having problems. So it's also possible we should, if we're going to be open minded, consider that one of the problems might just be, you know, maybe it's just a very hard problem. They got a lot of people using this, a lot of different environments be impossible not to have a few problems and that's all we're hearing a few thousand people having problems i guess <laughs> i kind of lean in the other direction microsoft come on do a better job you know the real answer is not maybe do a better job or rehire those testers the real answer probably is stop putting out twice yearly updates you don't have to nobody's clamoring for the new menu item just, you know, slow it down. Maybe only put out a new uh, version of Windows every couple of years so you can really test it, really make sure it's reliable. You know, there'll still be problems, but maybe it'll be more reliable. Maybe, you, maybe you're trying too hard. You're biting off more than you can chew, Microsoft. That's another possibility. Uh, I personally, 
my attitude, you've heard me say it before, it gets people angry. I know you're going to see red. Friends don't let friends use Windows. If you've got an IT department or you're willing to be your IT department, it's fine. Get Windows. Otherwise, get a Chromebook. Uh, get an iPad. I guess if you want a really powerful general purpose computer, get a Mac. Run Linux. Windows really should be the last of your choices. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It's time for Dick D. Bartolo, Mad's Maddest Writer. Are you still Mad's Maddest Writer, even though Mad isn't doing any new content? Uh, yeah, because now no one can pass me. <laughs> you won. It's I over. Won. You won. I won and not buying anything new. So uh... <laughs> He was in every episode, issue of Mad Magazine for more than five decades. Dick yeah. D. Bartolo. Uh, but now he's our officially our Giz Wiz. He's our guy. Gizwiz.biz. Yes. Remembering a gadget that you might have forgotten about. You were talking to one of your listeners earlier. Yes. And you said, you know, you could take your cell phone and put it up in front of your eyes and it would be like a big screen TV. <laughs> yes, you can. So oh. uh, on my website, I said, Leo, did you forget... TV, TV hat. hat. <laughs> it was uh, about eleven years ago oh at CES, and, and I said, to, "I said, what in the world are you wearing?" And he said, "Oh, it's TV hat. You you put your uh, smartphone in here. It's on a track. Your smartphone is on a track. So you run it up and down until it looks like a giant screen TV. Then you lower the drapes <laughs> around <laughs> around the cap." So that you're in si in uh, in blackness, and I think it also had headphones in there that you clicked into your smartphone. That's crazy. Yeah, and you don't anyway. look too goofy with that. No, oh, it's perfect. No. It's perfect. Oh, oh, no, I wear no. that instead of the mask, and <laughs> people automatically Keep stay more social than six distancing. Feet away. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. So Dick collects these kind of weird, oddball oh. uh, gizmos and gadgets. Yes. That's why he's our gizmo wizard, our gizwiz. And now I have. What are you wearing? What is that? Uh, LED gloves. Of course, who who doesn't? So LED gloves. LED gloves is kind of an, uh, a neat idea. Uh, it, two fingers slip in from each hand. Yeah. And then there's Velcro or hook and uh, stick that go around your wrist. So your hands are free, but if you're doing chores, like tightening screws or things, you don't need anybody holding a flashlight because you have four LEDs that aim toward whatever you're doing. So I think it's a very clever idea. Now a little they, weird they, looking when you oh, just wear them around. Well, I only wear them when I have the hat on because <laughs> it's it's kind of a set. It'd be good for directing traffic, though. Oh, you know that's great. Yeah. It's also great for walking the dog. Sure, well, mommy. Why is that man's hand on fire? <laughs> LED flashlight gloves. Right, and, and they. They run on uh, CR2016 uh, batteries, and they come with a little screwdriver. I, and I like the directions. It says, when the batteries die, replace them with the screwdriver. And I thought, well, <laughs> that won't work. that's not going to work. <laughs> that won't work. First of all, the screwdriver <laughs> wouldn't even fit in the battery compartment. Now, you, because this is such an important and beautiful thing. Oh, you got right. the wrong link in the website. You made, you have two videos. There's the regular one. And they're one. both wrong? Well, I don't know if they're both wrong. Uh, do, the, do second, the second one now. The, 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 in the dark with the LED gloves is wrong. That gives me, it is. Uh, oh, okay. gives me okay. the best Sorry. tech. But that's all right. The first one. The first one is right. Yeah, and just you'll fix that. So this is, yeah. but I would I wanted to see what it looked like in the dark. Oh, okay. Just just run that by a little. What I did was, to make it easy for you, I oh, you have a link the, the in-dark section. Oh, so it's the same and, video. Oh, okay. It, it's a shortened version of it. I see. But when especially, I went back to YouTube. Especially edited. <laughs> especially screwed up for your show. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just just for me. <laughs> uh -huh. Dick's wandering <laughs> off into the dark. <laughs> so they ra they range from six fifty to seven fifty. You can buy them in in groups. And it was so funny because when I put them on, I said to Dennis, you know what? 
these are two right-handed LED gloves. Now what do I do? And then I said, wait a minute. I bought two pair. Is it possible the other pair is two left-handed gloves? Oh, no. And they were. And they were. But they were. They put them. Oh, that's a little. Well, that's. Okay. You know, maybe maybe the guy says, well, this guy bought two sets, two and then two and somehow. But now I have two proper pair. And also, so I can't if, you, if you're ever called upon to park 747s at JFK, you're ready. You can you don't need the batons. Yep. Yeah, you right. can just <laughs> wave your hands. But I don't plan on being near an airplane for a very long yeah, time. Me neither. Yeah. Yeah. But Dick, you're you're a homebody anyway. You don't. Do you miss the big trade shows? Because that's really that's probably the. Most. Yeah, I'm gonna miss CES. At first, I thought, well, you know, oh, I'm just gonna go. Wait you know, a minute. Just good news. Yeah. CES is on in January. No, I know it is. Well, you're not going. No. <laughs> but you know what? I I have an idea that they're taking this very seriously because the latest update was CES will be smaller this year. Yeah. Because normally 180,000 people jammed into the convention right. center. A lot of overseas vendors will not be coming and consequently the aisles will be very wide. Oh, that's good. Uh, it might be a really fun good. time. Yeah, and it also said, and there will be a great amount of uh, of CES for the press online. Good. So I guess they already know that a lot of the press is not going to be there in person. Yeah. I mean, it was fun. You could find a ton of stuff in three days that would take months to find. Part of the problem Plus, now is our awareness has been raised. We used to come home from CES sick pretty much every time, yeah. right? But we just thought, well, that's the CES flu. Everybody gets it. No big deal. Now we're kind of more aware that this is this is a breeding ground for germs. We're all, <laughs> we're all jammed yes. together. 100,000 people from all over the world just jammed together for four days. That's crazy. Yeah. So, and hand, so hand sanitizer is not going to work for that many people. You need a shower. Hand sanitizer shower. Oh, a shower. Okay, yeah. that's good. Yeah. Dickie D, he's at gizwiz.biz, G-I-Z-W-I-Z dot B-I-Z. You can click the uh, Gizwiz Visits the Tech Guy uh, button there, and that'll give you uh, the look at the LED gloves and all the other things he's mentioned on our shows. He's also a regular on ABC's World News Now. There's links there. And, of course, lots of other things, including the What the Heck Is It contest. We wrapped it up. Last time you were on was the last few uh, minutes of the let me see what it was. I don't know. I'm thinking it looked like a lawn sprinkler for like a Barbie house. I don't. I don't know what Actually, it was. Actually, it's one of the few times no one. Got no it. one got it. Yeah. What was it? So, oh, no, uh, hands-free funnel holder. It's the unifunnel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now, wait a minute. You, you laugh, but this is not a bad idea. Yeah. So you're, you're, you're broken down and you need gas yeah. and you have a five-gallon thing in your, in your trunk. Yeah. And you're holding a funnel. Well, this is back in the days when you had a car that took gas. And you would put the funnel in there and you're trying to hold the funnel with one hand and you're trying to pour the gas in with yeah. the other hand. Yeah. Well, the funnel... Uh, the unifunnel <laughs> go, wraps around the funnel and then it spreads out and makes like a base so that the oh, funnel stays steady. Freestanding funnel holder. Freestanding funnel, yeah. Now, what is yeah. this? This is the new one. That's the new one. It's the big well, blue I, button, whatever that I'm is. Gonna, yeah. I don't know yeah, what that is. That's a, that's a good guess, but it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. You know, your chance to win an autographed copy. Of, are you still, is there still mad magazines to give away? Yes, there are. Oh, good. I think they have three years of subscribers that they have to just keep doing something. Oh, they keep, yeah, yeah. Well, good. So here you are. You're in the drawing. You got a couple of months to the end of August to figure out what that is. There's uh, uh, up to 18 autographed copies of Mad Magazine, six for the best answer, the right answer, 12 for the best wrong answer. Dick's the final judge of that. Go to gizwiz.biz to play. And don't forget Dick's fabulous program. The Gizwiz Podcast. That's at gizwiz.tv. Thank you, Dickie D. Thank you, sir. See you next week. We'll see you next week. Thanks to our musical director, Professor Laura. Thanks to Kim Schaffer, our phone angel. Thanks to you for joining me, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the tech guy show for today. Thank you so much for being here. 
And don't forget, TWIT, T-W-I-T. It stands for This Week in Tech, and you'll find it at twit.tv, including the podcasts for this show. We talk about Windows on Windows Weekly, Macintosh on Mac Break Weekly, iPads, iPhones, Apple Watches on iOS Today, Security on Security Now. I mean, I can go on and on and on. And, of course, the big show every Sunday afternoon, This Week in Tech. You'll find it all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next week with another great Tech Guys show. Thanks for joining me. We'll see you next time.